Hello everyone, welcome to Rob the Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we play tabletop board games on this channel, sometimes video games, I mix them in there, I know, I know, I'm sorry. It's Rob's Gaming Table, where I like to show you cool games, play them on our table, show them off, have some fun. Sometimes we have others join us on the channel, sometimes it's just me. But we always have fun playing along with you guys live, and so it was a good time. This stream is not one of those live streams where we're playing a board game. So if you click this, expecting us to be playing Madara or Descent or Arkham Horror, the living card game, you click the wrong video. You have, you have to move your mouse like a little bit to the right on, on our YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table, and, and, and then go to the playlist section and you'll find what you're looking for in there. I'm just kidding. You guys know what you clicked on. You know what you clicked on. So we are here today. It's Gen Con Online 2021. There is a Gen Con physically going to be happening this week. 2021 in Indianapolis, Indiana. It is usually the largest tabletop gaming convention in North America. I have gone to it for the last, I think I've been to it like six or seven times in the last eight years or something like that. Maybe it's less, maybe it's a bit more. I, I don't remember. I think my first one was like 2013. So it can't be that long. It's like eight years. Obviously there wasn't one last year. I missed one year in there before. So I've been to like five or six of them. I'm, I'm math. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, probably And I think six. I've been to one less than you. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Mel, Mel's gone to most of them. Yeah, uh, I just didn't go the very, very first time. Yeah. I originally started going to Gen Con in Indianapolis, Indiana. We can drive there. It's roughly like a seven-ish hour drive, depending on traffic and border weights and stuff. We live in Canada, so we don't really have any huge board gaming conventions here in Canada. We have some, but it's mainly just local retailers attend, and then it's like a lot of tournaments and open gaming and stuff. But at Gen Con, a lot of board game publishers from all around the world get together and release new games, and they save all their big announcements for around Gen Con. But since 2019 and COVID-19 happening, uh, there was no Gen Con last year. They did Gen Con online. That was a train wreck. I, I don't know. There was nothing exciting there. Not to mention the shipping crisis we're having in the world, production costs going up, all this kind of stuff. Board games are getting delayed, major releases are getting pushed back, and no one's really announcing anything crazy lately, it seems, unless you're on Kickstarter. But even that stuff's getting pushed back and delayed by years. Um, so yeah, Gen Con usually, I get all excited. Gen Con's coming up, it's usually in the summer, in August. Uh, we get excited, I book hotels and like, January. January, yeah. I book. I, you're, I'm booking events and buying tickets online in like May or something. Usually, I'm getting excited, making my plans, booking off work, whatever I got to do. And I'm always excited for Gen Con every year going down there. I love it. I love getting in the dealer hall. The dealer hall has like thousands of exhibitors. Maybe it's hundreds, hundreds of exhibitors, thousands. I'm not sure. It's just huge. There's like tons of aisles. You get in there. It's open ten to six. You run in there first thing in the morning, trying to get limited copies of brand new games that aren't even out yet. Uh, going to talk to publishers and stuff, meeting people down there. It's so fun. I usually, almost every single year, play in some kind of card game tournament, whatever my lifestyle game of choice is at the time. Game of Thrones, the card game, Key Forge, uh, Legend of the Five Rings, whatever. I usually play in like whatever national or world championship or whatever is going on there. So I do some of that and I record videos of that stuff while I'm there. Um, but I didn't go last year. Obviously, there wasn't an in-person one. This year, I wanted to go. There were points where I said, ah, screw it, when they were talking about health and safety and the pandemic and stuff. I'm like, I don't want to go wear a mask. There won't be anyone there. Then I was like, okay, maybe I do want to go. Things are getting better. I got my COVID shot. We're all good. I'm, I'm, I'm fully immune. Uh, not fully immune. Vaccinated. Um, fully vaccinated is the word I'm looking for. Got my two jabs. Uh, so I wanted to go. And I thought, you know, Canadian border is welcoming, welcoming fully vaccinated Americans driving across the border into Canada. But the U.S. decided not to do what Canada did. And I thought they would. And, and they did, we don't want anyone coming in our country from Canada or Mexico other than flying in. I, I don't know what the difference is, but <laughs> you can't drive a car into the U.S. unless you have, like, a central business. Yeah. So we can't go across the border easily. Otherwise, it costs an arm and a leg to fly and all this stuff. And with a Gen Con that has a whole bunch of publishers pulling out, Fantasy Flight Games included, they're just doing a live stream on their own channel. They didn't go to Gen Con in person. They're not really doing Gen Con online, technically, I don't think. This might be part of Gen Con online. I'm not sure, but... Piazzo, all these big, huge, like the big, big, big sponsors of Gen Con, the huge companies that put tons of advertising money in it, they all backed out. So I didn't really think it was cool to go or not. But then as it's approaching, and I see Stacey H in the chat saying, is there, uh, I'm jealous. I, I wish I was there now as I see people vlogging about Gen Con and stuff like that and getting hyped about, you know, it, there's no real games, I think, that are releasing there that are like blowing anyone's socks off that have been announced. 
but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Not that we've seen. Not anyways. that I've seen. Yeah. And to my taste, of course. To my yeah. taste. Sure, there'll be some new games there. There'll be some limited games there and stuff, but no nothing crazy I've seen yet. Um, but maybe some of the big announcements and big games are going to be surprises. And I like when that happens, when you're there on like the Saturday and you're talking with people and they're like, oh, check out this booth. They have this new game and they just got their copies in on Saturday. It's like they weren't expecting to be here, so they didn't want to announce it. And now it's there. Go get it. Go get it. You know, mm -hmm. stuff like that happens. And, and I love that stuff. So I met a lot of people at Gen Con. I, I see friends, you know, from all around the world there uh, every time I go that I only see when I go there um, that I, I've missed over the last couple of years. So I wish I could go, but I can't. So otherwise I'd be there. Mm -hmm. So we instead are doing what we did last year for Gen Con Online 2020. We're just going to do a watch party here and sit at home and we're just going to watch it. And I know not everyone could go to Gen Con and I'm sure some of you would hang out with us. I, I, last year, I didn't think anyone really cared, but <laughs> then we had like, I don't know what it was, a couple hundred people watching it with us uh, and just having some fun. So we're going to talk. It's, it's not live for about another hour. Uh, so we're going to just hang out with you guys in the chat, talk about Gen Con, talk about what we think FFG is doing, stuff that FFG has announced recently, because usually Fantasy Flight Games will announce stuff like in the month leading up to Gen Con and announce some games that they'll have there to demo, some games they'll have for sale. And then they have an in-flight report at Gen Con, usually in like a, you know, a presentation hall or whatever, uh, some kind of ballroom or something with a stage and, and, you know, fireworks and laser shows and all this. No, I'm just joking. It doesn't get that crazy, but... Uh, usually they do a nice presentation on a stage with videos and high production uh, and they usually announce some cool stuff you weren't expecting and sometimes they even give out stuff for free like sometimes they'll be like here here's this new RPG we're working on boom everyone in here they'll do it Oprah style you get a free book <laughs> you get a deck for Keyforge boom you get two decks for Keyforge boom 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 uh, and they do stuff like that so we'll see it's not the same Fantasy Blade games that it used to be their CEO their founder is left uh, other, other executives have left a lot of designers have left a lot of departments have been, you know, they were bought by Asmodee. And then, of course, you don't need extra legal departments and RPG departments and miniature departments and stuff when you already have other publishers and, and development studios under your umbrella that already do that stuff. So you kind of like, you know, you try to try to strip and put things where they go. And I've been through that in, in my past work before having a company go public and then getting purchased and them just firing people like in mass and switching them around where they go. And just reorganizing, trying to make things run like a, a you know, a tight, efficient ship. Um, so it's not the same FFG. They're still producing board games. But I don't think they're doing RPG games anymore. They're not doing like novels and stuff. They're not doing miniature, skirmishy, OP, uh, like organized play type games anymore, is my understanding. So they're just, they're just now focused on like card games, board games, app-driven games. I don't know what else they're doing. I don't know what else, but we can talk about some of that. So... We'll see. It's not going to be like it used to. I don't think we're going to see them talk about a whole bunch of Star Wars miniatures games this year. Because that stuff all went to, uh, I believe it all went to uh, Atomic Mass. Uh, the company that actually in 2019 at Gen Con, they brought out and introduced them to show that they were working oh, yeah. on their Marvel. Uh, that new Marvel miniature game that came out, that, that war tabletop war game. And it was kind of funny. They announced this, this publisher to be like, hey, FFG fans, look, these guys are doing a miniatures game for Marvel. But really, you knew, as, now looking back, you could tell Asmodee was behind that to say, like, let's get them used to this atomic mass so the fans understand when all of a sudden, boom, these guys are now doing your Star Wars miniatures games. They're going to handle your organized play. You know, that boom, atomic mass. You already know the name. You can trust them. They were on the same stage as Fantasy Flight Games. You know, boom, don't worry, don't worry. Some of the employees went and worked for them and stuff. So, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I, I put a poll in the chat before the stream started, and I'm just going to end it now. It's just a funny one. I was just trying to be silly. If anyone was here last year, uh, Fantasy Flight Games doing their live stream and ended up like having sound issues, cutting out the stream dropped. They tried to bring it back up, dropped again. They eventually had to end the live stream in the middle of it. Everyone's watching, and they just killed it. They couldn't get it live again. For some reason, the janitor who, who runs the live streams, <laughs> he at that time was even worse. He didn't know how to get the live stream back up. So they just ended the live stream recorded it locally, uploaded the video file like an hour after that. Uh, I think we ended our stream. We didn't wait for it to upload. So to this year, if they end it and, and it drops on them again, they have to record it locally. We'll hang out. We'll chat with you guys. And if they post it, we'll watch it together later. We're here. We'll be here for at least the next like two, three mm -hmm. hours, I assume. I don't know how long the stream is, but we'll stick around after the stream. And we'll discuss it. So we'll talk now for about an hour. Then we'll shut up. We'll mute ourselves. We'll put the, the stream on, on, on full screen. 
you guys can watch it here or there's a link down in the video description if you want to watch it on their stream go nuts uh, and then come back after it's over and we'll just chat about it, give you our thoughts. We want to hear your thoughts. We'll just discuss it, uh, what we saw, if there's anything that, that pertains to us and the games we care about or the IPs we care about or anything like that. Uh, we'll just discuss it after, check it out. Maybe we can watch some trailers that they release or anything like that that maybe doesn't make it in the presentation. Um, but that's the idea. That's generally the what's, what's happening here. Um, so the poll I put in the chat was, will the FFG in-flight report live stream have technical issues again this year? 67% <laughs> voted yes. So thank you everyone that voted. Uh, yeah, they have issues almost every stream I ever watch. There's sound out of sync. You can't hear somebody. A mic's not turned on. I mean, we have those here. It's live streaming. You're, yeah. you're, you're going to have mistakes. But it just sucks when it's like they're once a year. Most of the eyes are watching them and it happens during their yearly in-flight report like that's that's when it's like oh no yeah but when they're just playing they're announcing like a new card for a mar or a new hero for marvel champions you know you have a couple hundred people watching no big deal but when you have like thousands watching it's like ugh. i mean they're not known for having the best live streams yeah ever since so. ryan left man <laughs> ever since ryan left but uh yeah so the janitor doesn't do a great job maybe they hired someone maybe they hired a third-party company a marketing company to run it for them today hopefully <laughs> Uh, but they do have live streams scheduled all week. They have, um, we can actually look at that stuff. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I can find my mouse. Uh, so if I look at their webpage, uh, and you can find a link to their webpage down in the video description also, fantasyflightgames.com. Uh, they have their FFG Live is back. Uh, so they popped the schedule in here. So today is what you're watching in an hour. We'll be watching the Fantasy Flight Games in-flight report where they have uh their ceo or head of studio head of studio sorry head of studio chris gerber he was the guy we met last year for the first time uh took over for andrew navarro i think uh and for a look at upcoming ffg games new announcements and more uh then on thursday so tomorrow at 3 p.m central uh they're gonna do gameplay of lord of the rings jersey middle earth uh the the next expansion aka the last big box expansion spreading war so if you're interested in that tune into that tomorrow on their channel uh, then they have this a Game of Thrones Betwixt, which we'll talk about a bit here before they start to find out what the heck this is all about. Mm -hmm. uh, but Frank Brooks, uh, I know who Frank Brooks is. Um, he's worked on like their Star Wars IPs before and stuff. I actually met him when he was volunteering at a Days of Ice and Fire uh, event. I, I played Game of Thrones, the board game Sex Edition with Frank Brooks before. He's a really nice dude, oh, nice. really nice dude. And then he eventually got hired and now he's designing games for them and stuff. Uh, really cool guy. Um, Anyone doesn't know, uh, Fancy Flight Games is my favorite publisher. They've been, they got me into the hobby of modern board gaming when I found out about their games in like 2012, uh, based on the Game of Thrones license, then the Lord of the Rings license and stuff. Uh, just because they have those IPs, I checked in their games, played their games, love their games. They're amazing, of high quality. So then, of course, when I start playing other games after that, that's when I start getting jaded. Like, this is not as good as a Fantasy Flight game. But I know they're not the same company anymore, but I still love the stuff they make. They still do a good job. There's still some good people there working on games, of course. Um, so, yeah. But just so you know, that's why I'm doing this. I, I, I'm always interested in what they're doing, good or bad. <laughs> yeah. We do play a lot of the games, We do play right? a lot so of Fantasy lot Flight of, games. A lot yeah. of the IPs are up our alley. Yep. Right from the <laughs> beginning. I played so many of their organized play games, bought so many of their uh, cooperative games, their board games, their card games, their party games, like all this, their kids' games in the past. Uh, I was buying it all. Uh, their art books, their novels, none of their RPG stuff, but um, yeah. And none of their tabletop miniature stuff, like uh, like Rune Wars or any of that stuff. I, I don't really play those kind of games, but... Uh, and then on sa Saturday, uh, they're going to do an Unfathomable big game. Tune in for an exciting six-player game of Unfathomable, and that is the redesign of Battlestar Galactica, the much-beloved game uh, with an Arkham Files IP on top of it and reworked for that kind of thing. So if you're interested in that stuff, check that out later in the week. So I'm assuming we'll talk about some of this stuff in today's uh, uh, stream, but maybe not. Maybe they might leave it and say, you want more info, come there. And maybe it's all new stuff today. Who knows? Who knows? Fingers crossed for some new Fingers stuff. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah. I cannot do the second poll. Sorry. It doesn't let me. Okay. No worries. No worries. Uh, so, I just want to put another poll in there for fun while we're reading the chat. Yeah. So, knowing what they're, uh, what they've been talking about lately, we'll talk about some of that stuff. 
The chat is also going much faster than yeah, usual, yeah, so it's I hard know. for us to read everything. So we apologize. It's all good. <laughs> well, you can chat I'm amongst trying, each yeah, other I'm too. It's to all good. Glance through everything, it's all but. Good. <laughs> Lots of chat happening. So the poll is related to last year. We saw them uh, tease us the box for Descent uh, Legends of the Dark, uh, which, you know, blew everyone's mind that they're showing off this giant box. Uh, and we were all excited for us, super hyped for it. Uh, and we play it on the channel now. It lived up to my hype. I, Same. I, I've been having tons of fun with it. We're playing through it on the channel. You can check that out in the playlist section. I think we have only two more episodes and we played all the missions that are in the box, but we might be surprised and find out that's not true. But based on what we've been told, that's where we are. But uh, we've been having a blast playing Descent Legends of the Dark. So maybe they'll reveal something that big. Maybe they'll show us Descent Legends of the Dark Act 2 is a real thing. And, you know, maybe there's some expansion for that. Maybe there's something completely new. But that's the kind of level of announcement we might see today at the end of the stream. You know, they might tease us with a huge bomb, like some new IP they got. Or something amazing they're doing with some other in-house uh, intellectual property that they have that you haven't heard about in a while or something who knows yeah they did list new announcements so, yeah new I announcements mean, so it could just be expansions something, but yeah it might not be, it could be living just, up to the hype it could be just a second edition of some game you know you already have mm -hmm. that just came out like three years ago and they're now doing a second edition who knows yeah you never know we'll exactly. see exactly but that's what we're here to find out and, and we'll have fun making fun of it if it's that's the case or we might be excited and we might be super happy about some of this stuff but either way we'll talk about it after um and we want to hear your thoughts, of course. Uh, so, let me see. I did our thing for our Q&A we do here. Oh, successful geek, super kind. You're fine. I never expect streamers to reply. Just enjoy what you do. Well, no, I'm going to scroll up and find out what you said <laughs> and what you want an answer to now. No. You, you buttered me up with your kind words, successful geek. <laughs> Uh, if you guys have any questions or anything, uh, we can discuss them too. I see Dale's in there. Dale's name pops up. I recognize Dale's name. But hello, everyone else. Lots Lopet of familiar Lopetors names. In here. Some new yeah. names as well. So oh, there's some names I haven't seen in a while that, yeah. are, that are back, which is yeah. awesome. So hello to everyone. And I understand we've been playing a lot of story, spoilery campaigns lately on the channel, which we sometimes do in excess. And I know some people don't want to watch beyond like episode one or don't want to be spoiled in some of the games we're playing right now. So some of you we haven't seen in a while because we've been playing those kind of games, just getting lost in Madara, uh, Descent, Arkham Horror, the card game, uh, you know. So we're going to get back to playing some one-off games with, like, you know, minimal spoilers soon. Um, but we're just having fun getting through some of those right now, which I thought was waiting for Frosthaven and Oldsworn to come. But now those are, like, next year, quarter two, quarter one, whatever. So we'll get back to playing some games in between that once we uh, get done some of these campaigns. So once we're done Descent... And we can like fit another game in there or something. Um, but yeah, should be good. <laughs> Hello, Dan. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So yeah, drop the poll in the chat. If you think FFG is going to, uh, do you think FFG is going to surprise us with something exciting this year or not? Let me know in the, in the poll that's in the live chat. I'm curious. Uh, I want to see what you guys think. Uh... Uh, Drew's got a good point. Outer Rim. Uh, this is something that comes up a lot, I notice, if you're in an FFG live stream ever. They ask, people ask for this? Ever. If you're watching about, uh, you know, they're, uh, a ch kids game they're making called, you know, Three, the th Three Little Pigs, Second Edition, whatever, people will be in there asking about Star Wars games, especially Outer Rim, all the time going, where's my damn expansion? So any kind of stream you watch, there's always somebody coming in, or, or a tweet from FFG, I noticed. There will always be someone in the replying to the tweet like, where's my Outer Rim expansion? Well, I remember when we played it on, yeah. the, on stream, people kept asking, and we were kind of saying potentially maybe like a Mandalorian type expansion. That's got to that be coming. That would be so much fun. And, and my assumption, my assumption is a lot of these big things, and we know this from other publishers, other publishers have said this already. There were a lot of huge games that were coming in 2020, a lot of huge expansions, a lot of huge announcements, all these games and Kickstarters and everything, all these projects, tons of people, tons of money behind them. And then COVID hit. And then people had to start working from home and all of a sudden shipping delays and factories shut down and all this stuff. You know, conventions weren't happening. You know, marketing wasn't the same. People had to rethink their strategy. People had to let people go. All this crazy stuff happened. And people decided to take those games and put them on the shelf. Like, they could have been working on a Mandalorian Outer Rim expansion and had it planned to announce in 2020 at Gen Con. And then went, nope. 
If we make that expansion now, it's gonna cost $120. It won't ship for three years because we can't get a hold of shipping containers. The factory reprint ad is already busy doing other stuff. Uh, let's just delay that for a bit. It'll still sell well in a couple years. Like, let's put it on the back burner. Maybe that's what's happening. Maybe things like that. It could just be that kind of thing. Maybe the license for Star Wars. It's gone to Atomic Mass, right? It's still under Asmodee, but like, who knows what's in there? Maybe, maybe the board game license for Star Wars ran up, but the miniatures license didn't or something. I don't know. Who knows? Well, Kevin is saying, didn't FFG confirm there would be more Outer Rim? Um, if they did, if, then they've probably just taken their sweet time yeah. and they're going to do it at the right time. Maybe we're going to hear about it today. Kevin said like a year or so back, maybe. Oh. Okay, but, so maybe they did. But was it before COVID hit or, or after COVID was like already going and all the lockdowns and issues and stuff? Maybe they needed to see. that's changed everything. Yeah. People are delaying games for like two, three years. Kickstarter deliveries are making up excuses. Uh, de design time's taking an extra six months. No, mm -hmm. it's you went to find out how much it's going to take to print your game and you found out it's through the roof. So you're going to just delay it for a while. Hopefully you can print it later. Uh, a lot of companies are doing that. Some are being upfront about it. Some are asking for more money for shipping and stuff. Uh, but others are realizing they had a Kickstarter in 2018, took a bunch of money or 2019 or 2020 and realizing the money they took from you guys doesn't cover what the cost is to make a game now and to ship a game. So now they're like, uh, let's just delay it and hopefully things will work their way out. So we'll see. Could just be that deal. Um, well, something I want to talk about, something Ooh. I want to talk about, let's talk about some of the stuff FFG has been uh, announcing and working on here. So if anyone didn't see this, uh, I want to talk about this, this, uh, Kind of, kind of surprised me. It surprised me in a few ways. If anyone hasn't seen recently, Keyforge. Oh yes. Uh, Keyforge is a game I've probably spent. Mm, I don't want to admit it, but probably like a thousand dollars on decks. I, I don't know. I'm I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't want to add it up. Uh, I'll be scared. But it is a game I know that it's. It, the beauty of it is you can show up ten minutes before a tournament, buy a deck for twelve dollars and play in a tournament. Mm -hmm. It's got the lowest barrier of entry to a card game ever, but the gameplay, in my opinion, is amazing. Yep, I love it. And I love it. it. All age groups can figure it out and learn it. It's so fun. Uh, it's designed by Richard Garfield, the designer of Magic the Gathering, and this is his version of a card game, learning what he learned after seeing how Magic uh, developed and what it became. He thought Magic, you know, before the internet got big and all this, people would buy Magic the Gathering cards, people would be opening booster packs, and they'd just be building random decks, showing up to tournaments, and you never know what you're going to play across the table from you. You have no idea. That's what he thought would happen. That's not what happened. The internet came out. People find out about the cards. They spoil the whole pool. People post deck lists. People tell you what's in the meta, what's the best. People are posting tournament records, win-loss records. We have tournament software now that tracks all this stuff. So now you just literally know you want to play Magic the Gathering. You go find the type of deck you want to play. You find a list. You go buy all the cards on the secondary market. You have the same list as 30 other people, you know, that are sitting around you at a tournament. You know, it's one of the top two or three decks that you're going to play against most of the day. Uh, and and that, that went against what he originally thought his game was going to be. So when he had the chance for Keyforge, he worked with Fantasy Flight Games to come up with a card game that is, uh, has an algorithm that designs decks and puts decks together from a card pool every set. And you don't know what's going to be in the deck. You just open the deck. It's already built, ready to go. It has a bunch of synergies and combos in it, a bunch of cards. But you could sit across the table from somebody, and every deck is unique. No deck ever made for this game is identical to any other deck. Which is amazing. Which is so cool. Yeah. Some decks aren't as good as others. We've learned this. Some decks, it's harder to play if you play a certain style, and you get a certain deck that's want to play control. You know, sometimes you might open a deck, and you're like, oh, this doesn't play the way I want to play the game, so I'm going to suck with it, obviously, because I'm not used to this play style. Those kind of things happen still. But it's awesome. It's awesome. Keyforge is awesome. I don't care what anyone says. I love it. Again, like app-driven board games, it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Some people love building decks and spreading cards all over the floor and trying to build the best deck they can before going to a tournament. There's people like me who love just going to a convention, sitting down at a table, a brand new set of Keyforge comes out, and, and it's like better than draft. You don't have to draft. You don't have to yeah. build a deck sealed. You literally sit down at the table. You can be playing a whole tournament in 10 minutes because you literally open a deck, sleeve it, and you just start playing. Look through your cards quick. Uh, you don't have to draft. You don't have to open a bunch of sealed packs. Uh, and you don't have to build your deck before traveling to the convention or going to your local game store. Uh, so it just it's, it's for the busy people uh, who don't have the time. And, and you can still play an epic card game against someone. I love it. I love, love Keyforge. But Keyforge is down. 
down, but not out. So they posted this article. I thought Keyforge was going to die and shrivel up and, and go away because FFG did the stupid thing of coming out with a game in the, in, the, in the era of digital card games also existing. So you have Wizards of the Coast, who's now leaned heavily into Magic the Gathering Online, like Hearthstone and that kind of stuff, and stopped really supporting the local game stores and the tournaments and the Grand Prix and all that kind of stuff, uh, the, the tournament scene. And that's what Keyforge was doing. It was about to come out with a whole scene of, of huge money prize tournaments and this whole hardcore pro player circuit and the casual tournaments and all this crazy stuff. It was all about the in-person play at the stores, at the conventions, you know, at their headquarters, whatever. They had all this big stuff planned and then COVID hit. Not many people are playing Keyforge on their kitchen tables, you know, if they're not playing at tournaments and streaming tournaments, and new cards are releasing, and everyone's going to their local game store all excited, uh, the game's going to die. And I assumed it would. They printed some cooperative content for it. I looked at printing some of that stuff and playing it on the channel, but it just wasn't worth the price of printing it and shipping and all that stuff to get some... I wish they sold them as packs that you could just buy these cooperative AI decks to play against. Yeah. Uh, but they didn't. They just did it print on demand. You had to find a place to print it at. There's no real cheap place I feel to do that in Canada, that, to my quality, uh, you know. Uh, every time I've ever done that stuff, it always costs so much getting it from a place in the U.S. But anyways, so they basically announced here that over the past year and a half has been rough, obviously. The pandemic's been not kind to the game, obviously. They made some print and play content I just talked about. However, they refused to give up. So crazy, I'm thinking like they're about to announce the game's dead. Okay, and I'm reading this. And it's near and dear to their heart. I've heard them, them say this about games before. It's near and dear to our heart, but unfortunately, we got to end the game, yada, yada. Uh, or we got to reboot the game or change something. So they have an unforeseen complication here. So this is where it started to blow my mind. Okay. So get the jokes ready. Uh, so it says here, we mentioned above the fact that the deck building algorithm. So how it works is FFG has an algorithm. They work on this algorithm for every set. They design decks and they literally dump these files to a printer in China, a printer in Germany. I don't know where else, but uh, that's where they were printing them from when I last played, really. Uh, and they would just send all these deck files and then they would just print and package the decks and then ship them around the world. So supposedly this algorithm, which I believe existed on some Fancy Flight Games computer somewhere, <laughs> uh, they didn't back it up. So it was broken. <laughs> it was broken and needs to be rebuilt from the ground up. So the janitor that they hired to run the live streams obviously accidentally spilled a mop bucket on the desktop that was underneath, underneath someone's desk and it ruined the computer. So because of that, they can't make any of these Keyforge decks to send to the printers. <laughs> uh, this is the silliest thing I've ever heard. Like you don't back that up in the cloud somewhere? Well, maybe it's more than just that. No, the person quit that, yeah. that, that worked on this. Yeah, and, and, and they then, don't know how to... And they didn't transfer their knowledge. We all know this. So <laughs> Asmodee came in and says, we're going to cut a bunch of people. And then somebody said, screw you, you. All my friends got fired. I'm leaving too. And they deleted all their stuff. Or they didn't give them the password. <laughs> yep, they didn't give them the password. They deleted all their stuff. They you know, only installed a virus that's just going to wipe out all the data like you know, a couple weeks after they leave. Yeah. Whatever they did. Uh, and they couldn't find someone else to figure it out for the price they wanted to pay. So it's an either an easy process or a fast one, which is why we're going on hiatus for a while. So basically, they had the next Keyforge set ready, and they proved it by showing this art here to show that they've spent money des graphic designing the boxes, the card decks, uh, you know, the art for the game. They obviously have art for the cards. They've decided on the factions, all that stuff. It's called the Winds of Exchange. But they can't make the decks. So when Keyforge actually comes back, which could be like a year from now, two years from now, I don't know. This is the next set we're going to get, I think. But That's they, what they made it seem like, yeah. But then they also talk in here about how they're going to make it like the biggest launch ever for the game. So it's going to be even bigger than when it came out. They're going to make sure to do it right. So they'll probably have some huge money tournaments and, and you know, good organized play behind it, we hope. Because that's the right way to do it. But the best thing out of here, the best thing out of here, what FFG didn't do right when they made this whole game about playing in person. And it's something I asked for. It's something the whole community asked for. Yep. The decks all come with QR codes. We can scan them into an app on, online and record wins and losses in the database. It worked with the tournament software. It was a beautiful thing. Why the hell could I not play that deck online in a digital app against people like I can do it in Pokemon and Magic Online and all these Hearthstones and other games? They had every deck was sold from day one with a QR code on it and you could scan it into a database and it was there. How come? And, and, and I couldn't... I, I, there was third-party support on... on um, what was it called? What was the website called to play Keyforge on? 
that, that you could scan in your decks uh, and play it on. It was like a third party, it was like a fan made site. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Not Octagon. I think you can play on Octagon maybe. No, it's but... not. You know what? I just took the app off my phone. Yeah, I forget what it's called. I played on it a bunch. And I was going to stream games from it, but it just didn't look good. But I didn't feel like. Uh... Yeah, so anyways. I don't remember. I complain. And, and, and why was there not an official version? And then COVID hit. If they had a digital version already rocking for like a year and people were already playing on it and they were having online tournaments, people are Could still going to. Imagine. Gonna, people would still play in person yeah. at their local game store. People would still play at, at, at conventions. But imagine on, on like, you know, uh, you know, middle of the night or a different time zone. Imagine you could take your deck, you play it at a tournament at your store, you know, on a Thursday night. Then you go home and then you play in a, a global tournament against people at, at like 10 p.m., you know what I mean? And you're like staying up late playing Keyforge tournaments against people that you couldn't play with in person anyway. Or you can use it for deck testing, right? If you want to play. Yeah, to deck te yeah, to all test that before stuff. you take a, a deck yep. to a big tournament. Yeah. Yeah. So it's crazy. Like, why did that not exist? But the best news out of this whole thing, it says, another exciting news, we are very much hope and in intend to launch a digital version of Keyforge, Keyforge, courtesy of our friends at Stainless Games, who make Duels of the Planeswalkers. I'm assuming that's a Magic the Gathering related thing. I don't know. Is that what they call Magic Online? I'm not sure. What is Duels of the Planeswalkers? Anyone oh, I know? Can, I can look it up. But uh, either way, Stainless Games, whoever that is, I want to look into them. I just didn't have a chance yet. But uh, so, yeah. The... Magic. Oh, okay. Or is it not? Can you go to Wikipedia there? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's the online game. Is it? It's a video game based on a popular card game. Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't think it is. The Crucible. Yes, the Crucible, oh, the Crucible is the website. Yes, yes, yes. The Crucible is the website that you can play on, right? Yes. Maybe not. No, that know. is right. That is right, 100%. Okay. Yeah. So it says this exciting new project is currently in discussion, so that means they haven't even started it yet. And we're so <laughs> delighted that we simply had to share the snippet of incredible news. So they literally just probably signed the contract like a week ago to like start the process of like hiring people to make this game. <laughs> But they were so excited. They couldn't even wait until Gen Con to yeah. say this. They had to so make an article. We're probably not going to see this game for like two years. But they're probably going to talk about this tonight, I feel. Oh, Magic the Gathering Arena is the online version, right? And that is not what these guys made. So do not get that twisted. Yeah, it's called Magic the Gathering Arena, right? It is the online version of Magic. So don't think it'll be like that or the same as that. Yeah, it's a separate thing. It's a separate thing. So I don't know why they put this in here. I've never heard of this video game, but actually, you know what? Let's uh, let's find out its rating on Steam. <laughs> uh, is it a thing? It's a strategy game. Came out in 2010. Oh wow! It was probably before ratings were even a thing. Yeah, it doesn't even have ratings. Is it? Can you still buy it? You can run it on a Pentium 4. <laughs> Windows XP service pack 3 you need. So literally, they're trying to brag that the company working on this brand new Keyforge digital game is, they're announcing a game they made 11 years ago, 12 years ago. That's not smart. Well, maybe they've made other things. I know, but then why put that in there? Maybe, because uh, it's maybe the only card game related. It's not, but really, like, you know what I mean? They just use the IP. Yeah, I know. I don't Carmageddon? Know. They made Carmageddon? Um, that's it. Look at it. This is all they made. The last game that's in Steam here is 2016. I'm a little worried, guys. I'm now worried. I'm not excited anymore about, about Keyforge Digital. Uh, my excitement just died. I'm sorry. If they told me Asmodee Digital was handling it and just using a publisher or a development studio underneath them or something, I'd be fine. They make pretty good stuff. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> oh no. Hopefully it's fine. Hopefully it's fine. <laughs> uh, but why put that in here? Like why? I think they're trying to trick people to think that it's like a Magic the Gathering thing. So they'll be like, oh, they worked on Magic the Gathering. Oh, okay. It looks like they're working on like arcade style games. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, currently. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Anyways. We won't be disappointed until I we still try wanna play. I still want to be able to scan my deck in and play in an official capacity. Hopefully they have tournaments and stuff. 
Uh, yeah, we'll see. But we won't see that announced today, I'm sure, because they if they literally just put the ink on the paper. Well, the marketing images on their website are amazing. Like, looks cool. Yeah, yeah. So. But anyways. Okay. So that's Keyforge, unfortunately. So Keyforge is not dead. It'll come back. I'm excited for that. Yeah, I want to play Keyforge again. I didn't really I play the talk about it every now and again. Yeah, I, did, I didn't play any of the last two sets just because obviously I wasn't going to stores and playing at tournaments. Yeah, we were at stores weekly, yeah. right, for tournaments. Yeah, up until like um, probably yeah. September of 2019 we played. Yeah. We would go every week regular, to our local game regular. store. We went to Gen Con and played in tournaments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were yeah, we were hardcore with We it. also played on the channel where we would open decks yep. and just play yep. open and play right away, just like yep. as if it was a yep. tournament we, we like drove, practice. We drove the, the pre release stuff at different stores all around our province to go get like the exclusive stuff, you know, like yeah, we were pretty hardcore with it. I loved the game. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Yeah. Anyways, uh okay. The other thing. Um, Game of Thrones Betwixt. So this is something that they're doing a live stream for, or whatever. Um, but this game, I, I didn't even know about this till I, I saw it a couple of days ago. I saw uh, they, they were streaming it. They were going to be streaming it later this week. And I went, what the hell is this? Another little get card game that they just used the Game of Thrones IP on? You know me, I love this IP. It's like my favorite. Um, but I didn't know what Betwixt was. And I thought it was like, you know, the way that they do like um, Star Wars Monopoly, Star Wars Risk, Star Wars Spotted, Star Wars whatever. I thought Betwixt is some little party game I've never heard of. And they're using the Game of Thrones license. I googled that. I can't find anything on Betwixt. I then went to BGG to read in the forums and there's only one forum post asking why is it using the stupid name? What the hell does Betwixt mean? Nobody can figure it out. If you search Betwixt, does anyone know what that means? Supposedly, someone even searched all of George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire novels and cannot find this word anywhere in A Song of Ice and Fire series. I've never heard that word, yeah. I've never heard it. I don't know what it means, but that's what they're calling this game. game a Game of Thrones Betwixt. So basically what it is, is a uh, hand management, quick card game they're calling it. it, has negotiation, auction and bidding, take that, and hidden victory points. There are some people in the chat that are maybe helping answer this question. So Kate is saying it's between two cities with uh, Game of Thrones skin. And Dan is saying left side, right side, Twix. Pretty sure that's it. Well, I think he's joking. People are talking about like oh, which I get side it. of the I Twix chocolate it. bar. I, I, I get it now. <laughs> My brain didn't comprehend that as fast as yeah, yeah. until I say it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> which, which Twix is better, the left one or the right yeah, one? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. But... <laughs> It's between two cities with an agot skin. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is between two cities? I don't know what between two cities is. Um, I know I've heard of it. Yeah, that sounds never... familiar. Is that the, like, uh, Stonemaier Games one that they did? Here, let's go to BGG. Yeah, still my games, yeah. Yeah, I've never played it though. I've never played it. So I don't I don't really know anything about it. From 2015. But this has card drafting, which that one doesn't list either. Heather says betwixt means in between. Really? Do we look up the word? I I did. Oh, no, but I didn't search it that way, like B-E-T. I searched it like B, you know, uh, apostrophe, Oh yeah. whatever they said. It is. Okay, it just between means in between. Between two things or two people. But why didn't they spell it B-E-T, like W-I-X-T? Yeah. They want to be it's different. It's confusing. Anyways, it's weird. Either way, I thought it was just a reskin of some game. Supposedly it is. Oh, but the first thread was, is it a real word? <laughs> uncommon yeah anyways anyways i just thought it's weird hopefully it's a decent game okay um but yeah it's just a little card game where you're like uh you know playing powers trying to get allies uh but the cool part is you pick from one of nine characters and it's using art the art i love all the art ffg uses for all their game of thrones games since the early 2000s i, I love it all i have the original ccg cards just that bought a bunch and they have art on them i never played that one uh, but the LCG, the board game, I love all the art they use. I love some of their artists and stuff. Anyways, they're using a lot of that art from special cards that I like played with for years. I see that red viper there. 
I see that Red Viper card. I played with that one in my deck. That was not the popular one to play with in second edition, by the way. But I still played it because it was awesome. Um, but anyways, yeah, yeah. So they have some of the images here. So you can play as one of the nine characters. And you're playing this like quick card game. The cool part is the, the from what I understand, is those victory point tokens, the little gold coins, there is different numbers on the bottom of them. And you don't see them during the game. So you're like bidding for power, trying to move them into your little score area. So you see Council A, Council B, Council C, uh, and Council D, I guess, would be there. But what it's showing you is that these little score piles are your councils. So you have a council on your left, a council on your right. But you share those councils with the other player also adjacent to you. So at the end of the game, whoever has the highest scoring small council, and the small council is the one beside you that has the lowest number of points between the two. But if you tie with another player that's on the other side, you then look at the other council on your other side and the person with the highest score in that one wins. So you're playing this whole game of moving points and allies around and playing card powers and bidding and stuff, trying to just like move points around the table and, ha and so that you have the best small council. So it's like this weird, I don't even know. I want to play it. I want to try it. It looks like a fun little party yeah. game, right? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. more people you have, it seems yeah. the more fun it'll be. So I'm interested. I don't need to know any more than it's, you know, FFG's making it, has a Game of Thrones license. It's a quick little card game. I know players that I can play this with. It's just a fun filler game, it seems like. Yeah. Before we play a Game of Thrones board game and want to kill each other, I could pull this out while we're waiting for Kyle to show up for game night, you know, because he's fighting with his kids, you know, getting them to bed, and then we can play with him when he gets there. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the meantime... We can backstab each other in this little card game. And they've made other small games with the Game of Thrones license. Uh, we have a couple of them, but we, we didn't get them all. There was one, The Hand of a King or something, that was supposedly really good that I was told, but I, I never played that one. But uh, I had like the cartoony art in it. But yeah, that's all this is. It's just like messing around with points and using like card powers and stuff. But you see all that art. Anyone who played Game of Thrones 2nd Edition or Game of Thrones a board game, you know this art. Mm -hmm. There you got Pulling the Strings. I, I have like six play mats with that art on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Good times, good times. So yeah, there it talks about the scoring. So it's like, okay, you know, uh, John and Daenerys are beside each other. Their small council is 17 and they share it. And they have the best one at the table. But then they have to look at the, uh, the one on the other side. So even though you're putting points in the other one, it might help your opponents, but it might help you later in the game too. So uh, it's just this little like, you know, hand management, take that kind of small card game. Nothing crazy. Yeah. But that's something they showed off and these are the type of games they show off before Gen Con. Just to say like, yeah, this game we're making this year, it'll be in demo format Gen Con, or you can buy it, whatever, no big deal. Just wait till our in report for our big announcements. Yeah. That's so, this is just the small stuff they're announcing lately, so, yeah. It, they've always done this. They've always announced new stuff, and you're like, why didn't you just save that for your... Like, save it for one month or two weeks till you're, you're in flight report. And just, just to have just, more content. Just bombard us. Bombard us yeah. with, like, new game, new more game, hype. new game. Yeah, but they do that all the time. Like, yeah. it's weird. It just so they, it shows they have so much stuff. Um, I found this. I went and looked this up. We haven't looked at this in a while. Oh, yeah, it has been a while. But I found the release for Asmodee North America, and it still shows now fall for the Arkham Horror stuff. The revised edition. And the two, you know, new delivery model of all the player cards in one box, all the campaign cards in one box. Uh, there's no date for that yet. I met, originally, it was like one was in September, one was in October. And now they're saying it's like they're just pushed. Yeah, I know UK did get the investigator box yeah. already. but So Game of Thrones Betwixt is the fall. The fall. Uh, Arkham Horror, all that stuff is the fall. Um the Marvel Champions pack for Nebula didn't slide. It's, I believe, it's still the 17th of September, oh, okay. which is in like two days. So supposedly there'll be a Nebula pack coming out, uh, which I'm obviously excited if they announce any Marvel Champions stuff. Last year they announced the, um, the Guardians of the Galaxy campaign. So this year they'll probably announce uh, the next campaign after the Thanos one, maybe. Is that Thanos one out yet? No. No, that's that probably, was still no, no, right? wait, just wait. Yeah, that, used to be, that was that August originally. That was supposed to come out already. Um, maybe that's in here. There's uh, Spreading War. Oops, Spreading War is the fall. <laughs> Originally, they were saying that was like October, I thought, but uh, maybe I was just yeah, maybe I was October. thinking that. I don't know. Maybe I was just thinking from last year's product. No, it did say they did say October. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's in the, the fall. fall. The fall. Everything's coming oh, out. Oh no! In the fall. Hold on. Look, Nebula Pack is in the fall also. Well, it's September she, technically she slid. fall. She just slid as I scrolled the page. She just slid, slid down. I scrolled too fast. <laughs> See? Nebula Pack, September 17th. So somebody moved the date, but then didn't delete this entry, I think. 
So Nebula might not be coming out in two days. <laughs> wow. This uh, fall is uh Yeah, they're all ex falling. Exciting. They're all falling to the <laughs> fall release date. So I don't know if they'll talk about any of that stuff in the live stream, maybe. Maybe they'll mention some other stuff today about the delays on things and what they're looking at, new dates and stuff. You know, maybe they'll show just a one slide showing here's all the new dates, not, you know, not in stone, but here's what we're looking at. Oh, some of them have populated. So if I click... I thought we looked at them and they all said October 31st. Oh, now November. No, no, those are placeholder. Please stop. No, no, no. These yeah, are placeholder. These are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because watch. We do this every time. What's, yeah. the, what's the 30th of November? What's what, sorry? What day of the week is the 30th of November? Tuesday. It's not oh. coming out on that Tuesday. What day did they usually come out? I don't know. Thursdays, I thought. I thought no, it was well, a I Thursday. Think, I think originally when we looked at this, they all said, uh, at least for the Arkham when we were looking, they all said October 31st, which was a Sunday. This yeah, is but different. But it's just a placeholder. But, yeah. They're all just placeholders. Don't believe any of that stuff. It's all placeholder. Whenever you do the last or the first of a month in any retail industry, that is like red flag for we're not sure right now. We're just going to throw a date in there. Yeah. Because we can't leave that field blank in the database. That's all that means. Yeah, some people in the UK have got this already, supposedly. I don't know if Canada Maybe if we're going to get it. Maybe it came with the Arkham stuff. Yeah. So the anyways, uh, I just want to talk about some of that stuff. And uh, I think that's all, really. Let's see what the poll, what you guys talk about in the poll oh, yeah. here. I want to see the results of, uh, do you guys think uh, Fantasy Flight Games is going to announce something cool this year? Let's see what the results are in the live chat. It'll pop up in a second here. There's always a delay. So it says, uh, no, 66% say no. FFG is not going to announce anything that's going to surprise us. Nothing amazing. Okay. Nothing amazing that's going to surprise us this year. Okay. 33% so, think yes. <laughs> but that's one of those things, right? Where if you go in thinking the worst and then something good happens, yeah, you're not we'll disappointed. See. We'll see. Who knows? Who knows? But I hope they do. I hope they do. I just need like one thing. I understand they're not the same company anymore. I understand the world of board game production and design and delivery in the retail world is all on its head right now so i don't expect them to be like you know pumping out games right now mm -hmm. but if they just announce something cool they're working on that's coming out within the next year I, I, like they did with the scent last year i'll be excited yeah like, dale 33 percent are hopeful that's yeah. me i'm in that 33 i'm in the 33 percent. i think they're going to show something that's cool now it could be something that's with an ip or game design i don't care about so i might not be as excited that's true but if it's like, you know, an IP I love or a, 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 gate, a similar design to something I love or, you know, has a designer's name on it from something I love, you know, I might, might like be doing cartwheels. We'll see. But anyways. But what they announced doesn't necessarily have to come out right now because Scott no. was saying with the uh, with Descent last year and the current shipping. True. But if it's something that they announced that they're working on. Uh, uh. So Dan says, go in expecting the worst. My mindset with every stream. Exactly, right? Dan? Thanks, Dan. Exactly. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> this is asking what's in my mug. It's just decaf tea. Uh, but yeah, anything you guys are looking forward to seeing other than the Outer Rim expansion? What do you think well, happening? Everyone's hoping for an Outer Rim expansion. Maybe they're going to announce the next thing with Lord of the Rings, Journeys of Middle-Earth. They said that was the last big box coming out later this year. Maybe they're going to announce the next DLC or the next small box expansion, whatever that is. Hmm. Uh, just see. Kim says a new LCG. That would be cool. That'd be interesting. That'd be interesting. I don't know if they can support anymore, but they if they're they've ended Lord of the Rings or have wound it down, and you know I, I don't know with the new release model of Dream for Arkham, I would I would be surprised if they announce something before they see if that release model works. Like I have a feeling they'll wait till the Arkham Horror new revised core set hit the market, see how it does, see how the new uh, campaign and player card expansions work, and then based on that data then start planning how they're going to do their next game. But maybe they've already gone all in and done all the research and thought, this is the way we're doing it, we don't care. And they were already working on the next one, you know? Maybe they will talk more about the model, this model for Arkham. Yep. 
Yeah, maybe. For the future. They might, right? yeah. They, they kind of just dropped on us that they were doing that. Yeah, they might announce today that, you know, all the previous sets are coming out starting next year, you know, they're yeah. going to start releasing. Which would be amazing. You know, and then uh, going forward, this is their new model. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm hoping Fingers for that. Fingers crossed for that for sure. Those kind of things are good. Um, I hope that they talk a little bit about Descent, maybe how it's doing and what their future yeah. is and yep. I, I whether it's good or bad. Yep, I hope we hear the next. I hope we hear if it's a, a small box expansion. If, even if they announce it, like, we're not going to do Act 2 and Act 3 anymore, we've decided we're just going to bring out some small box expansions, some new DLC campaigns, uh, and, you know, use the stuff we already have in the box, add a few more monsters, maybe a couple more heroes in an expansion. Yeah. I'm fine with that, too. Yeah. But maybe they've been working on Acts 1, 2, and 3 all simultaneously. And maybe oh, and then they broke it up? Maybe they're way further than we think. But yeah. after how buggy the app was at the beginning, I, I'm not sure they were, but... Uh, <laughs> I have a feeling they're not there. Hopefully they learn from, I hope they're not that far on Act 2 and Act 3 so that they've taken the time to learn from all the feedback and the players playing it and that kind of stuff, uh, you know, in the real world and then apply those things that they've learned into the Act 2 and Act 3 and make them even better. That's what I hope. That's what I hope. Just looking if there's any questions in the chat. I'm just scrolling back up here. I'm doing it in the wrong window, of course. <laughs> Yeah, so the IPs I'm excited for, anything Arkham Horror or Arkham Files, I guess. But I don't know, like, what they would talk about. Like, maybe just more unfa unfathomable, or are they going to talk about what's next after that? Hopefully uh, something more than just that. Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, we're doing with that IP. Are they going to make a, a Star Wars board game? Are we going to see something cool, like, you know, other than Outer Rim? Like, some other crazy Star Wars board game, you know, that they've been working on? Um, yeah, who knows? A anything in the, the Terranoth universe? Like, yeah. they used to have so many game Terranoth games, and, you know, they kind of scaled back. Uh, so maybe they're trying to do the whole pump-out quality, like, less games more often, instead of going the quantity, just, like, pumping out stuff, you know? Maybe they've kind of scaled it back. Uh, Tom saying, is there a release date for Unfathomable? I think it's in the fall. Yeah, Tom, yeah, they just says the fall. Yeah, later um, this year. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. The fall. The fall. Everything's coming in the fall. Which is probably January 2022. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm not going to get stressed out over release dates. Mm -mm. I, I stopped. This when COVID started, and, and just even me ordering, like, a cable to live stream with, you know, and just seeing how long a cable took to, to travel one hour of driving, it took, like, a month and a half for me to get, like, a cable or an adapter I needed or something or a camera lens or something. It's just like, I just stop caring. I just order stuff now on the internet like it's a Kickstarter. And I'll hopefully see it in a couple years. Like, that's just the way it is. So I, I don't get hyped up over release dates anymore. I'm not excited. And when a company announces something new coming out later, I just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me when I ha Tell me when it's like in the store. Let me know. Like, let me know when I can actually get it. I just don't care anymore. Yeah. I would be excited if they uh, announced maybe something of a more in-depth campaign for Mar Marvel Champions. I would like that. Uh, Cam's asking us if we're going to do some more Marvel Champions gameplay. Oh, yeah. funny. I just oh, said yeah, that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Sorry, you said that? Well, I was just saying that I would be oh, excited. Sorry. No, I know you're not listening to me, no, but they're listening all. to me. That sorry, I would what? be ex excited. What did you get here? <laughs> that I would be excited if they announced a more in-depth campaign for uh, Marvel Champions. Uh, I don't know. I think they have the next two or three years planned out already, and I don't think they've changed much. Like I have a feeling they've already designed like the next like three campaign boxes without feedback from the first one. Okay, well, because they supposedly I hope they not. had three years already planned out for the game, and most of the most of the packs we're getting now were like designed and and fully finished a year and a half ago or something crazy. So, like, they're way ahead on that game. I don't know if there's enough time to, like... Like, we might not see the improvements or changes to Marvel Champions that people gave feedback on the first few campaign boxes until, like, two years from now or something, you know? that's They work like that. They're always, like, a year ahead, uh, and things are all, like, finalized. Like, so when somebody gets a hold of something and complains about it to FFG, it's too late to fix the next product. It's, like, the one after that. Yeah. But, uh, well, I would be I would be excited if they, if they announced something like that. I'm just giving my what I would want, not what they're going to do. So Ninja Art says, speaking of Arkham Horror LCG, anyone else having trouble finding full expansions, all separate scenarios? We're just talking about the new release yeah. model. Uh, if you don't, if you need to find packs, find them now, because they're going to stop printing those, I think. And they're going to start releasing in full box sets. So you do not have to chase down separate packs anymore. So just be weary. Like you may not see the pack you're waiting for. It might not come out ever again. Because I have a feeling they probably are winding back on production. And they're going to go to the new release model. So 
you might be pay overpaying on the secondary market or just buying the whole expansion again, even though you're missing a couple packs. I, I don't know. So it's a weird time right now. I, I wouldn't really be buying anything Arkham Horror personally, unless I was just trying to, you know, get the sixth pack out of, you know, that I'm missing or, you know, pack number four that I'm missing and already have the other five or whatever. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. So yeah. be careful with that stuff. Well, hopefully we get more information on this today. Uh, Michael's asking if they're covering Unfathomable tonight. I don't know. They're, they're doing a stream of it later this week. So, and they posted articles. I, I don't know if they're going to mention it even today. Who knows? Yeah, they're doing a stream on Saturday at 11 Central Time. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm just looking through past chat, just trying to see anything I missed while I was rambling on there. No worries, we got... If you have any questions, just re-ask them. Yeah. I'll, I'll go down to the bottom of the chat if anyone has any questions. I'm just looking for comments, too, and stuff. We have about 13-ish minutes. Oh, let's make sure we don't miss it. Let's just get it in the background there so we, uh, we see. And, and if for some reason we don't see it start, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, that's it, right? What's it say? It's starting in... Let me see. So Daniel's saying, I wish they would make a game of Godzilla. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Starting in 11 minutes, it says, but they haven't started the stream yet. Oh, no. Michael says it already crashed pre-stream. Shut up. How, how did that happen if it's not even Shut live? Shut up. Hold You're on. lying. Hold on. You're lying. Uh, me too. Cocky Rooster. Actually, I was thinking about that. I was going to mention that too, actually. You brought up a good one. The Star Wars co-op LCG. They have the Star Wars license. The co-op LCG is sell well. They killed the previous LCG from Destiny, the CCG. Then they killed the CCG. So maybe they're going to try again. Third, third tries the charm, you know? And maybe do a Star Wars co-op LCG. I mean, you know that would print money. You know it would print money. You'd all be buying it. Don't lie. Let's try Star Wars. Star Wars cooperative co LCG, oh. where you're going on like missions and stuff. Like, mm. yeah. Oh, Cam mentioned it too. Well, too bad. Oh, sorry, I sorry. It. <laughs> I missed it. I'm sorry. I'm I'm scrolling through. I only catch certain things. I didn't mean to ignore you, Cam. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that earlier today. I was trying to think of things like, what am I going to see today? And I thought like, hmm, that Star Wars LCG is one of the only, only LCGs I never played. Uh, so I, I wonder if they'll they'll come up with a cooperative one. Maybe not. Maybe a whole new IP. Maybe a whole new IP. Imagine a whole new IP. That'd be cool. Because remember, they're under Asmodee now, and Asmodee has access to IPs through across the whole, the whole, their whole spread. That's why we're seeing those weird things like, uh, you know, World of uh, Small World of Warcraft, and uh, what was the other one? Um, it was like a World of Warcraft Catan or something. Like just like weird things like that. Like you never know. You never know what they'll come out with. So who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and boss says what we're all thinking yeah. i do not collect any more lcgs i've said this before too yep and now i'm like a thousand dollars in on arkham horror second edition or something crazy hopefully it's not that much it probably is more uh oh wait star wars okay never mind i'm in yeah i'm in well somebody just mentioned not too long ago in in the discord that they were watching uh, I think it was this War of Mine, our first this oh, War of Mine playthrough. World of Warcraft Pandemic, I'm sorry. But sorry, oh, go, no ahead. go ahead. They were watching uh, this War of Mine, our first playthrough, where where you had mentioned you will never play Arkham Horror. Oh, I said it. In, yeah, and they I brought that back and was like, well. No, you can probably find it in streams, like, <laughs> literally around when it was coming out. I was being asked on videos and streams and in comments and stuff all the time. I was getting messages. I was getting people coming up to me at tournaments at Gen Con going like, hey, did you get the new, did you see this new Arkham Horror game? That's, you know, and I'm just like, I, I'm sorry. I, I just, I already have LCGs I'm playing. I, I don't even know what that's about. <laughs> and you know and then i'm like trying to avoid it the best i can and i see everyone loving it and i'm playing lord of the rings lcg and i'm like i don't need another one get out of here <laughs> i already spent too much money on these other games and now here i am playing through it on the channel uh, uh brian's got a cool one here and this is the thing you guys always come into these ffg streams you're thinking like what are they going to reskin now with whatever <laughs> IP? And it's unfortunate, but sometimes people don't play the games because it doesn't have the IP they want, but they would play it if it did. Uh, I'm trying to find it on this one. 
Yeah, Brian says, Star Wars Journeys on the Outer Rim, a la Journeys in Middle Earth in Space. I mean, I would try it. So we all know that they did um, Star Wars, uh, was it Imperial Assault? That was like, you know, the, Descent, the sci-fi version of Descent, second edition. And now we have Descent fully app-driven. And, you know, they dabbled with that in Descent, second edition. And we know they dabbled with the app in Star Wars Imperial Assault. Does that mean we're going to see Descent, or sorry, Star Wars Journeys of the Dark or whatever, you know, like that game where they take Imperial Assault? And take the app driven of you know descent now and and lord of the rings and uh manage the madness second edition are we going to see that where they're doing a star wars version of that and we see a star wars dungeon crawler app driven game i don't know i don't know <laughs> i'm not sure i don't know these are the things like who knows right Oh, I guess this. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Edgar says every pack is in stock oh, for Arkham Horror LCG on FFG site. That's crazy. I was crazy. just going to say the same thing. Well, get them all you can. Go, go, go. <laughs> go, go, go. Get them all you can. Successful Geek. I was just talking about this in uh, our Discord today. Yep. That uh, there's another Skyrim or Elder Scrolls board game coming uh, on Game Found soon by some other company I've never heard of. Uh, and we know. Uh, Chip Theory Games supposedly has an Elder Scroll game they're going to announce at some point in a future Kickstarter, I think. Uh, I think on the 21st. I think it's next week. And we all know Skyrim needs another version, so they're making like a PS5, Xbox One X edition of Skyrim, you know, because we just need more Skyrim. You know, there's Skyrim for your fridge, Skyrim for Alexa, Skyrim for your vacuum cleaner. You know, there's Skyrim has been re-released so many times. Uh, and now in board gaming, I was joking today about how we're probably going to see Skyrim the Roll and Write, Skyrim the Party Game. Uh, so yeah, Skyrim the LCG would not surprise me at all. So obviously Bethesda slash Microsoft is like just saying, whoever wants to license this IP, just here you go, take it. We'll, <laughs> we'll take your money. You put it on whatever you want. You're making sneakers, Skyrim sneakers? Go ahead. Yep, you got the license. So we'll see, we'll see. So be careful. When they start giving out IPs to just anybody, yeah, there's going to be a lot of junk to wade through for sure. Oh, that's funny. Uh, Brian says, the new Skyrim board game looks so cool. It's by Modifius. They make the Star Trek RPG and stuff. They are okay, but generally overpriced. I just read ratings and reviews on their last Skyrim game. They already did a Skyrim board game or something, and it did not do well. There were supposedly rules issues, translation issues. It was kind of felt like a rush project. Not rated very well. Uh, I don't know. So it was a big pile of meh. So here they are again. They're coming out on game found this time so just be wary just be careful you never know right like i'm sure it'll be fine but i don't know if it'll be great but it just worries me a little bit you know they pay a lot for this ip so they're going to need a lot of money to cover the cost of that ip and making that game they might not spend a lot of time on development and play testing and stuff you never know you got to be careful uh alberta's asking do we know how long the in-flight report will be we do not no nope, no idea no idea we're gonna be here for like four hours watching it i don't know <laughs> no it'll probably be like an hour or less i would assume i would assume it's like 30 minutes to 60 minutes probably yeah and supposedly it's five more minutes away yeah i have it on behind us so if we see it come online and the countdown should start but it's still just they haven't clicked go live yet so yeah so everyone has about four or five minutes if you need to use the restroom or anything yep yep <laughs> Before they start. Oh, they did a Skyrim minis game. Yeah. Oh. Now they're doing a Skyrim minis game also. <laughs> it's just a box full of minis with a game attached. Hmm. Next week, Rob's Gaming Table, brought to you by Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> Skyrim on a home pregnancy test. Oh, goodness. Wasn't that a thing before? Where you could play like uh that's a thing i just can't remember what old game was it like dune or something doom there was something that somebody hacked a pregnancy test to be able to play probably doom 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 like d-o-o-m but that i don't think like really yeah it was a thing a few years back i would assume it's not yes doom is playable on a pregnancy test pc yeah. mag yeah i remember hearing about this shut up yeah they have like Oh my god. That's yeah. So maybe that's why you're saying it, but I just remember yeah. that from hearing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then someone says, "Does Doom play on anything?" 
what I do. Hi, Shomer. Now, I, I, yeah, I don't know if I play it on a pregnancy test. It depends if it's used or not. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it was a thing. Wow. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Random knowledge that's in my head. Not important knowledge. Billy, Billy's expecting Arkham Horror 3rd Edition with a Marvel retheme. <laughs> okay. So I'm trying to get all these, Wishful like, thinking. get all your predictions in now. We can kind of, like, see, you know, after you can be like, I was right. You know, I said this. Uh, there's a question for anyone in the chat. Uh, Michael says, just got into Arkham Horror LCG, which expansion to get first? Hmm. Uh, like I just said, don't buy anything for the game. Wait until the new release model starts coming out. I wouldn't buy well, anything. We don't know for sure that it's going to come out. We, wait till wait. after this report. I would wait. They're <laughs> not going to sure. say anything that's going to hurt the sales of the next expansions coming out. Right. You know, they want people to buy those. So they're going to want you to buy that as your first thing. So hopefully they designed Edge of the Earth to be new player friendly and kind of scale it back a bit. Oh, oh I, see, I, I see, I see something's happening. Stream begins. Oh Hopefully my God. Oh minutes. my God. Two minutes. Oh my God. Oh my God. So yeah, again, if you, if, if something goes wrong with our stream or something, or you, you don't like what you see, uh, you can always go watch your stream. I've linked it down in the video description and then you can come back here after and we'll discuss. We will be watching it, uh, with us muted. Uh, we're going to mute ourselves, and then we are going to just sit in the live chat with you guys. So we'll be commenting in the live chat. You guys give your live impressions in the chat. If you're watching this later, just open up the archive live chat. It should all be there. So you can see everyone's comments and stuff as it's happening. Uh, and then what you do is come back after if you don't want to hang out with us in the live chat. And uh, then we'll bring ourselves back up, and we'll just talk uh, with you guys. And I want to hear your impressions, and you know, we'll go over some things and look some things up if they post some new articles or something. You know? Who knows if, like, one of these times they're going to announce a game and they're going to be like, and you can buy it right now. And oh. you're going to be like, Phew! and then you're, we're, we'll just leave the stream, go drive through our local game store and buy it. <laughs> like, one of those, they do that with video games, but of course it's all, like, digitally distributed, right? But they could do it with a Descent campaign. Imagine they did that where they're like, boom, the next Descent uh, Legends of the Dark campaign is available now. Go download it. It's, like, all in all the app stores, like, right there they click the button to go. I don't know if they could do that, but that would be something amazing. I don't think anyone would leave and go play it, but uh, that's the kind of stuff they need to do to blow people away. The music's very soothing. Let's check it out. Let's see if you guys can hear it. Let's do a little test. Uh, We're there. You guys hear it okay? Can you hear the stream behind us? We'll mute, we'll mute ourselves in a second. Let me know if that looks okay. You guys can see it. Perfect. And what I'll do, I'll just hide us. Oh. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the 2021 Fantasy Flight Games in Flight Report. Uh, I'm Chris Gerber, head of Fantasy Flight Games Studio. Uh, as you know, last year we were unable to deliver our in flight report in person due to the coronavirus. And this year, we once again are going to be staying safe in our studio here in Minnesota. And so even though I can't see all of your faces, uh, I can't wait to show off some of the great things we have in store for you today and give you all a sneak peek into some of the awesome games we've been working on. Uh, here at FFG, we always strive to innovate and push our games to the next level, whether that's through art, mechanics, or player experience. And so tonight I have some updates uh, to some of our biggest product lines, including some new things that uh, I'm going to tease for the first time tonight. Uh, and as a quick aside, uh, please keep in mind that due to the ongoing unpredictability of the global shipping situation right now, I'm not going to be able to give you any precise release dates for anything that I talk about uh, today, but uh, I do... Um, I want you to all to be to rest assured that we're going to be doing everything we can to get these cool new products into your hands as soon as possible. And uh, I just want to say thanks for your understanding and your patience on that. So 
On behalf of everybody at the studio, I'd like to express our deepest thanks to all of you for joining us here and sharing in our love, our communal love for uh, tabletop gaming. So, without further ado, let's kick off today's presentation with some updates on one of our biggest games ever, Descent Legends of the Dark. I mean, this beast of a game <laughs> is one of FFG's crowning achievements. It's a massive project that took over three years in the making. And when I say massive, I, I really mean it. This was one of the, this was the largest single project that we as a studio have ever worked on. And it involved more people's work across, I mean, basically every single FFG uh, department that we have to get here uh, than anything we've ever done in the past. I think, personally, we created something really unique and special with this product. Uh, I'm very proud of it, and we are thrilled to see the response that people have had uh, after the game finally released uh, just th this early August. So, all last month, I have been hearing reports of people diving into the game and finding fun and unique ways to move through the story from uh, role-playing in their characters' voices uh, to everybody on the edge of their seats as they, they watch the darkness phase unfold, uh, wondering what's going to happen next. And I cannot express how happy I am to see such a strong start for Descent. And, and fortunately, this legend is only just getting started. Um, so, Legends of the Dark is the first game to take place in the newly rebranded Terranoth Legends universe. Uh, Longtime fans of Terranoth and Descent, uh, the franchise are going to find many things that are familiar about this latest take on FFG's classic fantasy setting, but also a lot of differences as we move forward. I mean, starting with this engrossing narrative in the first act of Legends of the Dark, where player decisions lead to real stakes in the world of Terranoth. Uh, we've been just really working hard to push this IP into something fresh and exciting uh, that'll sustain for years to come um, and entertain for years to come. So if you've been, uh, if you're still hesitant to jump onto the Descent hype train, I really do encourage you to give this new foray into Terranoth a try. Now, before I give a sneak peek on some of the upcoming content for Descent, and I, I do want to share just a little bit on that, um, I would like to share a look at some cool Descent goodies that uh, you may be aware of. Uh, first up are these um, fantastic, these fantastic dice, frankly, from Level Up Dice. Uh, these high-quality dice are made from semi-precious stones and add some real weight to your game. I mean, these things are... Are, they have some real heft to them. <laughs> and uh, we, re we revealed these awesome accessories uh, a little while ago, and now we're finally getting them in hand. And I just I wanted to give a quick shout out to Level Up because these things, uh, frankly, are awesome. Um, you can find more info about them uh, on their website. Uh, maybe down here. I don't know. <laughs> um, and if you're worried about damaging these new dice, if you do pick these up, uh, just don't forget that they can be played... Um, on this really cool Descent game map that we have uh, from our friends at our partners at Gamegenic. Um, really cool. So, and finally, if you want to take your game to the total next level and go even deeper into the stories that surround Legends of the Dark and the, the Terranoth universe, um, you can dive into the latest novel by Aconite Books, The Gates of Felgrim. Uh, so if that's uh, something you want to do, go check it out at F uh, FFG or Aconite's websites for more information on all of the Descent novel products you can find there. So anyway, back to the main game. I bet you are all wondering what is next for the story of Descent and our six intrepid heroes. And I'm not going to give any spoilers uh, for the Act 1. Uh, but... This game launched with the entirety of that Act 1 campaign ready to go, and I am pleased to confirm that Act 2 is already well on its way uh, through development here at FFG. And that said, though, every journey has many twists and turns, and sometimes uh, we wind up on a sidetrack. So I want to show you this. So this, uh, we're very proud of our plastic in this game, and this guy is a tricky new foe 
uh, that you might find yourself facing off against in Ghosts of Greyhaven, which is a brand new side story for Descent, uh, whose contents can be incorporated into the main Blood and Flame campaign. Um, I can't share too many details just yet with this expansion. I just wanted to show you this one uh, piece of plastic, which is, of course, a prototype. It's not going to be this color in the final box. Uh, but I can tell you that Ghosts of Greyhaven is going to come packed with uh, content that enhances the Descent experience for both the core set and all the future expansions to come. And so while I am showing off this new plastic, though, uh, I wanted to give you a real early tease of what is in store for Act 2. I brought this uh, with me right here. This not-so-little thing... <laughs> Uh, and just to show you how much we're upping the ante on this one, here is the bandit piece of plastic from Act 1. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm not ready to show off this right now, but just seeing how big it is should give you a pretty good sense of scale and, a, and an idea of, of what we're going for in Act 2 that what's going to bring to the table. So the Legend of the Dark is only going to get more epic from here, so stay tuned. So I'm going to put these guys back. And I, I want to move on and take a look now at uh, some updates for a game that we haven't been able to talk about for a while, Keyforge. So just last week, we published an update on our website going over the current status of Keyforge and why we haven't been able to provide any new content for so long. And I'm not going to repeat everything here today, uh, but the key points of that message were that first, Keyforge is uh, going on hiatus for a bit. Um, and second, that we do very much hope and intend to launch a digital version of Keyforge, courtesy of our friends at Stainless Games, when we, when we bring it back. And in that same message, we, did, we also mentioned a bit of what's in store for the game when we return, uh, a new set called Winds of Exchange. And obviously, we have a lot, we'll have a lot more to share as we approach that relaunch, but I wanted to you know, give you all a little taste. I'm happy to share uh, a few additional details of what that set's all about. Among other things, the set introduces the game's 11th house, the Compacts of Equidon, uh, a member of which can be seen on the cover here. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> this is a faction of merchants that are all about trade and exchange, and they do change up the way the game is played in, in all sorts of unique ways. And in addition to that new faction, the set does see the long-awaited return of House Mars. Uh, I'm sure that all of you longtime fans of Keyforge will be overjoyed to see the Martians' ridiculous antics return uh, in all their glory when the game relaunches. So that's Keyforge. Uh, stay tuned uh, for more information. Uh, all right. Now let's talk about a couple of our upcoming new games, A Game of Thrones Betwixt and Unfathomable. So just two weeks ago, we announced A Game of Thrones Betwixt, which is a brand new game set in George R.R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire universe. And in case you missed that announcement, Betwixt is a game, uh, as you'd expect, of political finesse and calculated betrayal, which of course makes it a perfect fit for the Game of Thrones setting. And the word betwixt means uh, between two people or things. Um, and that's not only thematically fitting for this game, it's also a part of the core mechanics. All of your power is shared with one neighbor or the other, and figuring out the best way to manipulate the other players uh, is key to coming out on top. In this fun little self-contained card game. You'll take on the role of iconic characters uh, such as Eddard Stark, Tyrion Lannister, Daenerys Targaryen, Melisandre, uh, Jon Snow, as you scheme and backstab your way into having the most powerful small council in Westeros. Uh, we're planning to release this game in late fall this year, so stay tuned for more upcoming news and previews in the coming weeks. And uh, before we do get into some more new stuff, uh, as I said, I'd like to also give a quick update on one of our most anticipated titles this year, Unfathomable. So, back in June, we announced Unfathomable, a, a new game of traitors and terror taking place 
in the Arkham Horror Files universe, one of my absolute favorite uh, IPs. And we are super excited for this game, and, and I frankly like uh, can't wait to get it in my own hands. And we really hope, though, to get it into all of your hands uh, by the end of September. Unfortunately, it looks like that is not going to be the case. Some deep ones uh, have interfered with the shipping schedule. Apparently, they didn't appreciate us making a game about fighting them off. Uh, but, you know, honestly, uh, just in all seriousness, just like every other company in the world right now, we are facing some shipping and logistics delays. And I'd love to tell you that we are somehow magically immune to this problem, but sadly, we are not. And uh, you, of course, have, our, have my sincerest apologies for that. Uh, we will keep you all posted on when the, uh, you know, when we fight the deep ones off and, and, and are able to release Unfathomable, uh, but it is delayed a little bit. But we still hope to have it in everybody's hands before the end of this year. Um, so, okay, continuing on. Let's take a look at Spreading War, the next expansion for Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle-Earth. As many of you may already be aware, Spreading War is the latest uh, big box expansion for Journeys in Middle-Earth. It's also the last big box expansion for the game. When we first set out to develop this game, uh, the plan from the very beginning was to tell a concise story. We wanted to create a trilogy of campaigns, uh, and with the core set, Shadowed Paths, and now Spreading War, we succeeded. That being said, we do plan to follow the same release model that we used for the core game and Shadowed Paths, and this means that we're going to follow up Spreading War with a full digital DLC campaign and a supporting figure pack. And while I'm not quite ready to show off this additional content yet, keep an eye on our website and our social media accounts going forward to stay up to date on the latest news for that game. Uh, also, if you haven't done so yet, I, I, I would love to, you, you should uh, be sure to check out our unboxing and QA video on Spreading War that we streamed on August 11th. Uh, in that video, we take a really uh, great look at the expansion's contents and our wonderful Grace Holding House uh, bring some fantastic and, frankly, infectious energy to the table. Uh, okay, so we've talked about board games for a while now. Let's switch gears uh, a bit and uh, take a look at some upcoming products for our cooperative uh, LCGs. First off, we have Arkham Horror the Card Game. Can you believe that it's been almost five years since we launched this game? Uh, the Arkham LCG is one of FFG's biggest triumphs, and it's, it's not slowing down anytime soon. So to that end, we have a new announcement for the game, a brand new standalone scenario in the same vein as we've done for Gen Cons in the past, in years past. And this year's special scenario is called Machinations Through Time. And like its name suggests, it's a time-hopping adventure that shows us our first glance at the city of Arkham in other time periods. This scenario is going to involve investigators jumping between the 1890s, of course the 1920s, and then the 1950s, which is really cool. And the actions that they take in each era are going to affect what happens in the others as they work to solve a mystery surrounding scientists disappearing through time. And like the Blob That Ate Everything and War of the Outer Gods, Machinations Through Time is, is, is compatible with uh, epic multiplayer mode. So while you can always enjoy the scenario with a normal uh, group of one to four players, you can also work together with other teams and solve this chronological caper when, when, it retur when, it, uh, when Machinations Through Time comes out in the first quarter of 2022. And before we get uh, to our next Arkham announcement, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the two upcoming Edge of the Earth expansions, which we announced uh, back in June. To recap on that, the next cycle for uh, Arkham LCG is going to be two robust expansions. The Investigator expansion, which is filled with new player cards, uh, it, all of the new player cards, and then the campaign expansion, which is uh, all the other cards, every card needed to play through an entirely new story. And these are both slated to come out later this fall. 
uh, I wanted to just give a little insight. I decided that this new release model is the right direction to go for all future Arkham Horror Cycles for a couple reasons. Uh, first, this method allows us to have uh, the entirety of a campaign in one box, which means players aren't going to need to worry about potentially missing out on any parts of the story. This makes it a, a much more player-friendly, forward-thinking format that's a lot more sustainable going forward. And second, designing campaigns with this style in mind uh, really offers MJ and the uh, amazing uh, rest of our Arkham team to uh, have more freedom in the structure of the campaigns themselves. Uh, without having to worry about cramming the campaign into exactly six mythos packs that follow a linear plot structure, now we can have campaigns like Edge of the Earth that have branching paths or, or, or multiple possible endings. And from what we've seen online, it seems like most of you agree that this is the, the way to go. Which means that you'll be excited to learn that we are not just doing this for the new Arkham content, we're also doing it for the old stuff. So, obviously some of you have probably already guessed that this was the plan, but today I'd like to officially uh, announce the first of these repackages, the Dunwich Legacy Investigator and Campaign Expansions. These two expansions take all the content that was previously released in the Dunwich Legacy Cycle and combines them together into just those two boxes. So just like Edge of the Earth, all the player cards for the cycle can be found in the Investigator expansion, while all the campaign cards and encounter cards can be then found in the campaign expansion. And I'd like to stress that this is, of course, all re-release content. So if you already own everything in the Dunwich Legacy Cycle, you're not going to find anything new in either of those boxes. However, uh, if you are a new player just starting to get into Arkham, then this kind of repackage is going to be a fantastic and easy way to experience the LCG's first wave of expansions for yourself. So we're aiming to have both of those expansions in people's hands in the first quarter of next year with the Investigator expansion coming first and then the Campaign expansion coming about you know, a month or two later. So stay tuned for more information on both of these titles in the, the near future. All right. So now, uh, speaking of the LCG model and cooperative, this is probably something that, 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 is, uh, that you don't know. On our very own Lord of the Rings LCG has now been out for over 10 years. 10 years. And while a dedicated following has built up over the last decade, uh, we also have now, because of the, the 10 years, a whole slew of players that barely even know uh, about this incredible game. And uh, it's also very daunting to get in. Uh, so we've decided that we'd like to fix that. And so today, I am happy to announce the Lord of the Rings, the card game revised course set. We are going to do this in a similar vein to the Arkham Horror Revised Core, but with a couple slight differences. Like with Arkham, we are revamping this course set to make it support one to four players right out of the box. Uh, we want to lower the barrier for entry and get as many people to try this game as possible. After all, it's been going strong for 10 years for a reason. We also decided that we wanted to add the campaign mode to the revised core set, something that was originally made popular by the game's Saga expansions. This means that the revised core is going to have the same scenarios as the original, but we'll have some brand new boons and burdens that have not been seen in the game before and allow players to advance from one scenario to the next. That said, if you own the original Lord of the Rings core set, you won't need to buy the revised core to experience this new campaign content, where we plan to make all of those boons and burden cards freely available as print and play content on our website. So as long as you have a core set, whether the original or this new revised version, you're going to be able to play the scenarios as a campaign. And so we're aiming to have uh, the revised core set in your hands again in early 2022. Also, similar to Arkham, we plan to repackage several of the game's cycles in the same style as we're doing for the Dunwich Legacy. There will be uh, a campaign box and a player box for each cycle that we do this for which means getting into the game is going to be easier than ever before. But each of these repackaged campaigns is also going to contain 
the new boons and burdens to, to facilitate that campaign play. Just like the revised core set, these are going to be made available as print and play on our website for existing players to also enjoy. However, please keep in mind that unlike Arkham, we're not going to be re-releasing all of the old content this way. It's a lot. And so we, we are going to have a selection of stories that we want to repackage for newer players. And those are the stories that we're going to be focusing on. Uh, and, and, and at least for now, we're not going to be creating new content for the Lord of the Rings LCG. The game is filled with these amazing stories. And, and we're going to focus on bringing some of the best of these back in this new format. This initiative is meant to make it easier for players who have been waiting for the opportunity to jump into Middle Earth. However, for longtime fans out there, I do want to follow up on an old promise we made. So, how many of you remember this little thing? This was a very, a special, very limited edition starter set that featured uh, unique components compared to the core set, including two special scenarios that you couldn't find anywhere else, uh, the Oath and the Caves of Nib and Doom. We're not going to release this limited edition product, but we are going to make those two scenarios available in their own standalone product called the Dark of Mirkwood. Better still, using the newly integrated campaign mode, these two scenarios can then also be played uh, as a standalone mini campaign or, or even as an extension to the Mirkwood Paths campaign that is in the core set. So we're aiming for, uh, again, a Q1 2022 release for that special scenario pack. All right. Jumping from our oldest LCG to now our youngest one, let's talk about Marvel Champions. We announced the Valkyrie Hero Pack a couple weeks ago, and now it's time to unveil the final Hero Pack of the Mad Titan Shadow Wave of content. So here he is. Uh, the last hero of the Mad Titan Shadow Wave is Vision, the ultimate android. He'll be joining the ranks of his fellow Avengers in the first quarter of 2022. So rounding out that fourth wave of hero packs, Vision comes uh, with a pre-built protection deck to, uh, to play from uh, the moment, of course, that you open his pack. Uh, his gameplay revolves around his density manipulation, which makes him a strategic hero with some impressive durability. Uh, you can look forward to some card spoilers when the official announcement article hits our website in a couple weeks. And unfortunately, that's all I've got for Marvel Champions. I got nothing else. Nothing else. What is this ridiculous thing we're trying to do? <laughs> oh, oh, we have this. What is this? This is Sinister Motives, the next campaign expansion for Marvel Champions. Uh, as you can see from the artwork, this marks the beginning of a small Spider-Verse themed wave of content for the game. Uh, in just this box alone, you're going to gain access to the web swinging heroes Ghost Spider and Spider-Man, uh, Miles Morales, uh, and face off against several uh, iconic Spider-Man uh, villains such as Sandman, uh, Venom, uh, the Notorious Sinister Six. So, as much as I'd love to, we're not quite ready to take a deep dive into this box today. Uh, but keep an eye on our website for the official announcement article in the coming months uh, for a more in-depth look at Sinister Motives. Uh, and as for the packs, the hero packs in this wave, you can probably expect some additional web warriors to join the fray, including a few really fun and unique uh, additions to the Marvel Champions hero roster, so stay tuned. All right, so let's shift gears once again back to board games, but uh, not just any board game. Let's, let's take a look at some really neat stuff coming for FFG's very first uh, board game, Twilight Imperium. So as you can see here, we are fast approaching Twilight Imperium's 25th anniversary in 2022. This is an amazing achievement for the IP that, frankly, kicked uh, Fantasy Flight off on its, on its long journey. To celebrate this achievement, I'm pleased to announce a, a new line of graphic novels set in the Twilight Imperium universe developed by our friends at CMON. 
These graphic novels are going to expand the universe of TI in exciting and unexpected ways. And they're written and drawn by some of the biggest names in comics, including Ron Mars, Andy, Andy Lanning, uh, Dan Abnett, uh, and more. And we worked really closely with the folks at CMON to ensure that everything in these stories is going to perfectly fit within the Twilight Imperium canon. And, and while I'm at it, Twilight Imperium isn't the only IP with graphic novels in the works. Our friends at CMON are also working on a series that takes place in the Android universe. This, uh, this work is also being done by an all-star cast with Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing doing the, the writing and, uh, and, and Guillaume Balbi doing the art. Uh, there's going to be tons of surprises in store for fans of both franchises when the Kickstarter campaign for those graphic novels launches next year. So keep an eye out on social media for sneak peeks and details as they, as they come in. And while we're on the subject of FFG's classic IPs, I'll just quickly, uh, I wanted to, I'm very pleased to announce that we are also particip are partnering with uh, Event Merchandising to launch our very own Fantasy Flight Games official fan sites. Uh, these online stores are going to feature all sorts of amazing, uh, awesome swag themed around our various IPs, including pillows, mugs, shirts, art prints, and more. The stores are going to keep growing after launch, which means you can all look forward to finally getting some, some of these awesome, amazing, exciting goodies that uh, are being added uh, as time goes on. The first IP to launch uh, its fan site is uh, Legend of the Five Rings, followed closely by Arkham Horror. And then sometime after that, we're going to also see the uh, Twilight Imperium joining their ranks. Uh, the launch dates are going to vary by region, which means I, I can't exactly say when they're going to be open just yet, so stay tuned. And then uh, now I'd like to switch gears one last time. Uh, I'd like to bring in Nate French, uh, FFG's executive game designer, uh, to take a moment to get a glimpse inside the studio and share some insight on a new initiative that I started over the past several years, a, a deeper level of R&D that is already resulting in some great new upcoming games that really push the boundaries of one of FFG's core tenets, uh, innovation. So, all right, Nate, uh, I'll go ahead and turn things over to you. Uh, what would you like to share with us regarding FFG's new research and development program? Hi, everyone. So as Chris said, I'm here to share a little behind the scenes peek into the studio, and I'm going to be talking about R&D and a shift of how we're approaching it here over the, the past couple of years. So for those who might not know, what is R&D? Uh, for this discussion, I'm going to be using a pretty simple definition that says R&D is the activities that focus on the innovation of new products and services. So in other words, it's how you come up with new ideas. Now, there's the question, where do you get your ideas? And this is kind of laughed at as a cliche question that gets asked when the writer meets their readers or fans. And kind of on the personal artistic level, it is kind of a meaningless question because everybody's going to come up with their ideas in their own way, and sometimes they may not even know. At an organizational level, however, this is a valuable question to confront. And much of what I'm going to be sharing tonight can serve as an answer to that question from the organizational perspective. So thinking about this topic and reflecting back on my career as a designer at FFG, which I've been here since 2006, I asked myself, where have most of our new game ideas come from? So the bulk of them seem to come, as I thought back, from three main categories. The first is from the top down. Someone in an executive position, such as perhaps Christian T. Peterson or Andrew Navarro, um, would come up with the core kernel of a really cool idea that they'd then hand off to a development team to execute that idea. Uh, the second big category was partnerships with external designers. Uh, people like Eric Lang or Richard Garfield or Richard Launius would bring games to Fantasy Flight and the development teams there were to kind of support and help carry these ideas to the finish line as finished products. And then the third broad category was either expansions to pre-existing games or new additions of older games um, where 
the content was a little different or new for the game, but much of the blueprint of what's at the core of the game was already more or less in place. So those were the three main categories. Now there was one rare exception. Um, occasionally we get an original pitch from an FFG designer that would be accepted for publication. Uh, and like I said, this always seemed like kind of a rare exception to the case. Uh, one example that's kind of near and dear to my heart is the solo CCG pitch that turned into Lord of the Rings and had a couple follow-up ideas that Chris was talking about earlier tonight. So when I moved into my, my new role at Fantasy Flight two years ago, I kind of had this, this dream of, is there a way that we could provide our designers with more promising avenues by which they'd be able to pitch and explore their own ideas? Now, this wasn't, this wasn't done with the goal of replacing those other three categories I mentioned. Um, if a good idea emerges from one of those sources, we'll certainly explore it. Instead, I think the goal here is to create an environment where the ideas being generated by FFG designers and our staff are just more regularly being thought up, conceived, pitched, and explored, so that that source is no longer the rare exception, but just a, no, a more regular and standard part of our process. So why is this a desirable outcome? Um, I think there's a couple of reasons. The first is that the more talented people we engage with to kind of conceptualize and come up with ideas, the richer the pool of potential product candidates becomes. So when we sit down to make a release schedule, we'll have more ideas to choose from and the ideas will also be more unexpected and, and more varied than if they are always coming from the same group of people. Uh, and then secondly, just from the perspective of the designers and the products that they're working on, when working on an idea that you had some hand in conceptualizing, it's a lot easier to kind of get the day-to-day -day passion and satisfaction and bring that to the table, and ultimately that will result in better products and better games and happier designers. So over the past couple of years, I've been working with head of studio Chris Gerber to put some of these processes into place. And we've, so far, and this isn't, Every way, we're, we're always exploring new ways, but so far we have three, three, three different initiatives that we've been building and working with in this, in this capacity. The first we call design sprints. Um, this is a case where I would work one-on-one -on -one with a single designer who has pitched a candidate idea that they're excited about and they want to explore. So the goal of the design sprint is fast prototyping. We want to get a prototype of the game on the table, play it, talk about it as quickly as possible, just to see if there's anything there that we want to go further with. Um, kind of a, an, an extra benefit of these design sprints is that after designer comes off of a long project, they're a great change of pace to give that designer a kind of a breath of fresh air and to do something a little bit different before they move on to their next big project. Uh, the second category uh, of R&D that we've been looking at is focused R&D sessions. So this is where they're, they're longer sessions. We give one or a team of designers an extended period of time to really focus on and do a deep dive exploration of a new idea that they are interested in exploring. Um, I'll share an example of one of these sessions in a couple moments. And then the third one, which we just a couple months ago launched and ran our first our first iteration of, we call it an R and D group. And this is kind of a it's about bringing together a cross disciplinary team from multiple departments in the studio, not just designers, but people from graphics and maybe an art director, someone from the marketing team, someone from the tech tech team. Like we bring people with different backgrounds together. The, the whole goal then, and they meet regularly a couple times a week, and the goal is group brainstorm and creative co collaboration and just see what comes out of that, focused on a topic, and see what comes out when those people with very diverse backgrounds just come together and start riffing on an idea. So there's a few key tenets that all of these R&D initiatives share here. Um, the first one is that the exploration is being driven by our staff. Um, it's not my role to come up with ideas and give them to these teams to explore. My contribution is mostly to provide feedback, to ask questions, and then to help these teams make things happen when we, when we put them in place and start moving them forward. Uh, secondly, the, any of these sessions are not going to be directly tied to a product release. Uh, the point of these is exploration and experimentation. Um, thinking back to working as a designer, 
when you start in on a game that is already on the release schedule and there's a deadline right from day one and you're you're moving toward that deadline and you're trying to make decisions about where to take the game and how different systems and mechanics are going to work you're going to be much more inclined and kind of pulled toward the realm of things that you have a lot of confidence on of this is very likely to work and kind of the riskier more ambitious experimental things that you might be intrigued to do if you had more time you're going to shy away from and it's it you have to kind of keep pushing yourself back into that realm of take risks push boundaries so in the very early stages of exploring ideas the freedom for an idea to not work will open up a lot of possibilities and when you when you're able to put creative people into an environment where they can take risks you're going to reap the benefits of much higher rewards so I mentioned before that I was going to give an example of um, one of the focused R&D sessions. So before I do, um, I just want to ask everybody to keep in mind this is still an idea that is in R&D. We're exploring the possibilities here, so I'm not promising that a game will come out of it. It's an example of one of the things that our current R&D is looking at. So with that caveat in mind, though, consider the question, what does an FFG legacy game look like? This was a question that one of our senior game designers, Kara Santel Dunk, wanted to explore. Uh, Kara is one of our top designers of narrative-driven board games. Uh, in the recent past, she's worked on Mansions of Madness, Journeys in Middle-Earth, and Descent Legends of the Dark. So most of this past summer, she's been engaged with and exploring the question of what we might do with the legacy game space. Um, and the ultimate goal is to kind of take her findings and focus them down into a new game. So as we were going through the session, Kara looked at, spent a lot of time looking at core loop mechanics. What might a good core loop for a legacy game look like? Uh, she explored different narrative possibilities and ways to tell stories and what kind of stories we could tell that would take real strong advantage of the legacy game space. Did a huge brainstorm working with a lot of different departments of original legacy moments that could make this game stand out and shine in the legacy game area. And then finally, she worked with the production teams to see what kind of manufacturing possibilities are out there that we, in our place in the gaming industry, would be able to take advantage of and lean on to really make this game shine from a manufacturing perspective. Based on the early returns of the session, there's some really cool things that we can do in this space. And I think if things continue to go well, there's a really good chance you might see some of the results of this exploration a little bit more down the road. So that's all I have for today. Um, thanks for watching, and I'm going to turn things back over to Chris, who has one more thing he'd like to share with everybody. All right. Thanks, Nate. Uh, everybody can uh, expect some really big and exciting new announcements from FFG in the coming months and years uh, from our increased focus on R&D. All right, uh, that brings us to the end of this year's presentation, but before we go, uh, I just have one thing, one more thing to show you. But before I do that, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today uh, for our 2021 in-flight report. As always, we greatly appreciate all of your love and support as we continue to make some of uh, the best games, in, in my opinion, in the tabletop industry. Uh, okay, last announcement. You know what? I'm not even going to say anything about this one. Instead, I'll just let the trailer do the talking. Who's paying for that microphone? That's like the only one they have. <laughs> That's the one that keeps getting the audio oh. sync issues. Now they got to buy a new mic, so we're finally going to hear them again. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs>
Okay, okay. Whoops, that's still up there. So yeah, that was cool. That was indifferent. Uh, where was the Mandalorian on the front of that box? There wasn't, right? There wasn't, no. Yeah, that needed to be the Mandalorian center, expansion. center, yeah. That needed to be like pulling mm -hmm. all the people who were watching the Disney Plus show right into it. Yeah. They needed to like sell it. I needed Baby Yoda and Mando right on the cover of that thing. Like, At least Baby Yoda. And I thought it was just taking so long because everyone knew that like the Baby Yoda toy or whatever, like they kept it so secret that no one was even in the toy companies couldn't even make toys the year it was out. We didn't get Baby Yoda toys for like a year. So I assumed the same thing. Like FFG had no idea what was happening in that show. So that's why it's taking so long. I was assumed that it was like a year delay before they could even start working on the expansion. Um, but maybe it's, that's what's also taking longer. Disney won't let them have that? Why, Jamos? Why, why not? That's, that's a weird thing to say. They don't want to make money. They'll let them use part of the license, but not some of it. I, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 yeah. Mando's the next expansion. I could see that. I could see that. But, yeah. But are we going to have to wait like how many years for that one? Two, two more years for that one? I well, hope hopefully, not. They're, hopefully they're designing, designing that yeah. with this. So. But when is that coming out? Did they, they didn't say. Yeah, that's probably like we're going to get that like September of next year. We're going to get crazy. that fall next year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like September of next year. Yeah. This time we'll be lucky if we're playing that probably. So, oh well. Always keep them wanting more. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So what do you guys think? Was it was it good? Uh, yeah, I my, don't know. I'm gonna put a poll. Minus the history lesson that we got. I zoned Was out a that lot of that. Better than expected? I'll have to say the stream didn't drop, so automatically it was better than I expected. Yeah, there was some flickering every now and again, but. <laughs> meh, Darth Kyron, meh. So they hit, they hit obviously on all the standard stuff. They, 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 you know, the Game of Thrones betwixt, the unfathomable, they took some time to just let everyone know about things they may not, like, people who don't go to their website have no idea any of those things are even happening, right? Or if you're not in the know, right? So this True. is their way of, like, you know, news art, news places are going to report on this. So they're going to now, you know, talk about this betwixt game, Game of Thrones betwixt, unfathomable, you know, this might be the first time anyone's ever seen it. Uh, you know, but they showed off a new Marvel Champions hero, you expect that. The next campaign expansion, expansion, just like we thought they did that last last year, they showed off the um, they showed off the uh, what was the one last year? The the Guardians of the Galaxy. So we expected them to tease another one this year. They did the Spider, you know, the Spider Verse one. Uh, so that was all expected. What was not expected was the Lord of the Rings LCG. No, that was not expected. I thought they already did a revised set. That limited edition core set they talked about, I thought that was a revised thing. I always thought they already redid the core set and fixed it. I didn't pay too much attention to that product at the time when they had that because I thought I had all the cards and I didn't care. But now there's a, a whole new entry point coming for Lord of the Rings The Living Card Game. I feel like they should tweak some rules and fix some things up with that game, but the fact they're putting the campaign mode right in the box right from the start to basically be closer to the, the revised core set for Arkham Horror coming out, the fact that you can buy it and play a campaign with boons and scars or whatever they call them in that game, and they're adding uh, that standalone, those two scenarios that you can you know have a five scenario campaign right off the start, that is great for anyone who's never played that game or who sold their collection before, you know, it's a, a new time to get back into it. I think that's great. And for a sucker like me, I will buy that revised core set. I will get it on the channel. We will play through it and I'll see if it holds up today. Yes, I have like 90% of the cards already, obviously, but I'm not but I'm not trying to print and play. I just talked about that before the stream. No. I, I don't want to print and play anything. They should sell those separate cards as something I can buy and I would gladly buy them. Yeah. Even if it's directly from FFG, I would buy it. And it gives us a reason to play this game because we talk about playing it every now and again. Yeah. We just want to play it, but this yeah. gives us a reason now to get so, back into it. So that announcement right there was basically Rob's Gaming Table is going to play Lord of the Rings LCG on the channel again. We yeah. only played it a couple times on the channel back in the day. I even deleted some videos. Yeah, way back. Because it was so bad quality. It was when I was like first experimenting with cameras and, and like recording and live streaming and stuff. Um, that was one of the first games we actually like filmed us playing. Um, but we played it a ton off camera. I've played hundreds and hundreds of hours of that game. Justin played with us a ton. Kyle, I know, has played with us a bunch. Uh, yeah, we love Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. We love it. I stopped buying it because we stopped playing it. We moved on to other games, but I still have a ton of it. 
I'm probably missing like two cycles or something, maybe three cycles. Maybe not even that much. I'm not sure. I just yeah, stopped paying remember. attention. Um, but I have a ton of the, the Nightmare Packs, the standalone packs, the Gen Con packs, all that stuff. I went to Gen Con. We played in events at Gen Con, met the designers, got packs early, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I went to the FFG booth. They wanted Gen Con to get the latest new pack before everyone else, that kind of stuff. I was super excited for that game. Yeah. I love that game. So so I'm excited. I was yeah. excited for that. Yeah. So that was basically like not exciting for anyone who's played the game. Like, eh, whatever. They're just repackaging it. But man, think about it. That is going to grow that game again. They said they're not going to do any more content for it, really. That's what they say. That's what they say. And they'll just repackage some of like the best of. But for people who never played it ever, and people are still playing it, you might have new players that you can find to play with again. You know, and that kind of thing. So just more people to the, the player pool is basically like a new entry point. Will it be successful? Will it hold up? I don't know. But uh, we'll get it. We'll try it. We'll play through that campaign on the channel. Try it out. And then we have all the SOG expansions. I just never played through them yet. I bought all the SOG expansions and I want to play through them. Thank you, King of Donato, for subscribing. Thank you. Anyone else who subscribed during the stream, I saw uh, the Ernie Force. Thank you so much for subscribing. Anyone who subscribed or anything during that, um, thank you so much for doing that. I just turned off notifications uh, while that stream was going so it wasn't like annoying everybody by popping up in the middle of the screen. Our faces on the screen were already annoying enough, so <laughs> uh, I didn't want to bother anyone. Uh, let's see here. Boss says, uh, Lord of the Rings LCG is the perfect LCG gameplay-wise. Uh, hmm. It's good. It's good. I don't know. You could tell it was like their first cooperative one. It's a little rough around the edges. Um, I feel like it could use a refinement, but it's still great. I, I love it. But It's very fun. Yeah, I just remember some things were a little clunky and a little weird in it, and then when I played like, you know, Marvel and Arkham and even, even competitive LCGs, just like, some of the designs that they learned in those earlier LCGs, you know, they, they kind of like improve them. So kind of sucks they're not like reworking the game a little bit, and, you know, using the same cards and same art, but like refining some of the rules and, and, and streamlining a little bit because that game got a little big and bloated. But, you know, I'm still I'm still excited for it. Tom strongly disagrees. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, fair. Arkham Horror is better. Yeah, everyone has their, their own preference, but. We haven't played it for a while, so yeah. maybe we'll play this new revised core set and yeah, then yeah. we can see how it holds up. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, disagreeing with that comment, I understand what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to close that poll there because it's... Oh, uh, yes. Let's see what, let's see what you guys were... Uh... <laughs> Remember, you got to have your expectations low. So <laughs> I asked the poll in the chat, was it better than expected, that presentation? And it was no. Now, I hope, I, I mean, I love Nate French. Yeah, I mean, take that part out. We would not have Lord of the Rings LCG without Nate French. That's his design. He was like head of the card game department for a while. Game of Thrones second edition. He's all, he was the reason that that was as good as it was. Uh, he, were, he has a hand in all the LCGs, all the card games at Fantasy Flight Games over the years. Uh, he's been there for a long time. Great guy, new, super nice guy. He is totally talking like he does in person. I've talked with him. Mm -hmm. He talks just like that. He's like a little, you know, he, he has like the kind of like, he's not huge outgoing, like a, a you know, a stand-up presenter kind of guy. He's just like a, a little evil genius that makes amazing games and is so good at game design. I, I just wish they didn't use him in presentations. Like, just get him to write, you know, his thoughts down and give it to somebody who's like better in front of the camera. That's just, that's just, that was not a great delivery, but that's not his fault. He did probably write it and they put it on a teleprompter in front of him. And then he had to sit down and like read off a teleprompter like the CEO did. And both of them were not great at reading off teleprompters. I suck at reading off teleprompters. I hate doing it. So I understand it's not the easiest thing. It's something you have to like really work at, but they probably should hire somebody to like, you know, present it, get someone from marketing that like, you know, goes out and sells things and like is good in front of the camera. To just like hype you up. That's the only thing they're missing, I think. There. But I think, did they need him to talk about what he talked about? I didn't no. feel like it was relevant. They, 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 they should they have cut that down a, to two minutes. Yeah, they could have done a two minute segment where he talks about developing yep. games and this and that, and then says the word legacy, and everyone's like, yep. wait, what did you just say? Yep. He should have you mentioned know? how, like, we're starting a new program, mention it very quickly, you know, a couple of sentences, and then be like, we've been working on this, we're doing a new design methodology, whatever. This is how we're doing it. And our first thing we're working on is a legacy game. And then boom, just a logo. Yeah. Just a logo. And that's more than enough. 
And then when the CEO or, or head of studios is done in the washroom and he comes back and then, <laughs> and then they switch while the logo's on screen. That was super weird. Like, I don't know why they couldn't have two cameras where they just switch to Nate at another table, but I know they've had streaming issues in the past. So they obviously got like the streaming set up perfect. They practiced on it and we're like, okay, we got this mic, these cables, these computers, everything's working. We're only using this. Nobody touch anything. Yeah. And we're going to use the stay same. There, you do this. We're using the same clip on mic. This is the only clip on mic that does not have audio sync issues. So we're, we're sharing this mic and this chair and these lights and this camera. Everything has to be this setup and that's it. Yeah. So you could tell they were like scared to experiment. So they kept it very, very safe, which I appreciate. I can appreciate that for sure. Yeah. Because they didn't want it to crash like last year. But uh, yeah, props to them. They made it through. They made it through. Except for the mic drop that broke the only microphone they had. So yeah. uh, we'll see if they can stream. The streams tomorrow might be canceled uh, because they broke the microphone. So we'll see. <laughs> um, I mean, it was a little cringy, their reveal of yeah, the, the Marvel thing. The thing, like coming thing from... banging him in the head. Yeah, it was kind of cheese. Okay, the comments you guys were saying in the chat during the uh, red cloth on the oh, miniature. Yeah. <laughs> my God, I was like dying. I was dying. And I made, I made jokes about like they're going after Kingdom Death Monster now by having like, you know... I'm not going to say it underneath the red cloth, those type of miniatures with, you know, not family friendly stuff on the mini. And that's why they're hiding it. They don't want to show it. Well, I don't think you realize. But yeah, it's, it's not. How no. it came across. Yeah, that was very <laughs> awkward. Like, why could he not just like hide it for a minute and then show it off and surprise us? Like, boom, look at this well, miniature. Well, he couldn't. He couldn't. He didn't want to show it yet. But like, why? I, I know why you can't show why it. Not? I don't understand. Are they worried some other Kickstarter company is going to copy the miniature and, and sell the exact same miniature? Maybe they're like, saving it for the reveal at like Origins or something. Like, I they need something. That was weird. I don't know. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, that was a little cringy. It was cringy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, FFG After Dark. Yeah. <laughs> you got to tune into the 18 plus stream and they'll, they'll then reveal it. But uh, I am excited because whatever it is, I'll be able to paint it. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm excited. <laughs> the mini needs to charge before he can show it off. <laughs> a successful geek. Batteries not included. Oh, goodness. Goodness. <laughs> oh, I really thought we were going to get to see what it was. I know. I was like, man, That was disappointing. On. Yeah, I thought he was setting it up for something, but then he's like, I'm just going to show you the size, and, and that's it. Yeah. You know? But yeah, if anyone watching, go back, watch that part, turn on our live chat, and see the comments. Like, I mean, there were some good ones in there. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, the mic for us, like, their stream wasn't out of sync, but most of their streams are for us. But I think what it is, it's a latency thing. So I don't know where you are, maybe you had to refresh the stream, but I noticed that sometimes our streams start, and they're totally out of sync. And then sometimes you've got to refresh the browser or or eventually like 10 minutes into the stream, it starts syncing up again. But that for us, it was a little bit out of sync at the beginning, but then it was but normal it, for yeah. us. So I, I'm apologize if it was out of sync for you on our stream. It shouldn't have been. But if it was, it might be because theirs was out of sync. But then some people are saying their stream on their site was out of sync on their YouTube page. But then some were saying it wasn't. So I have a feeling it's like a latency thing. So if you're watching from like, you know, further away or if you're watching at uh, you know 1080p versus 720 or whatever maybe there's like some kind of issue there with their their transcoding of their audio with the video i don't know <laughs> but I, I don't know I, I i set my bar low remember yeah. last year we got like they started off last year's with like let's talk about star wars armada miniatures and you know x-wing miniatures or whatever and and then it and then the stream died and that, that's what we got. And then we had to wait an hour later. We got an upload of like, okay, there's a descent box. Like, and yeah, they did talk about the Marvel Champions, you know, campaign box, but like. But it wasn't super exciting. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't crazy. This one wasn't that exciting either, but at least it, it, it surprised us with some things. You know, we're excited. More Marvel Champions box, the Lord of the Rings reboot. The announcement was huge. And I did, I've been saying this in streams for a while, the Arkham Horror repackaging of previous expansions. We were not sure if they were going to do it. And I've been telling people, don't go out and start buying into this game yet. Wait till the revised corset drops or wait till the new expansions come out. Because I think they're going to go back and, and redo the previous boxes once they see how the new ones sell. No, they're already in. They're all in. Well, they know. It's, it's they, not stupid. They've heard yeah, they the need complaints to do it. right from people. They yeah. know that this is just better. Yeah. So. So anyways, I'm excited that they're, they've announced they're repackaging all the Arkham Horror LCG stuff so people are getting into the game late like I did, you know, now just wait. You get the revised core set and, you know, get the edge of the earth, play it. Don't worry, you, you don't need all the other cards to play it. Then boom, uh, you know, return, or uh, sorry, the Dunwich Legacy will come out. Boom, you can buy that and play it and all the cards will be together. You don't need to hunt down packs. 
You don't know how good you have it. Just wait a little bit longer and buy that stuff. We're going to see new players come to the game because they that didn't want to chase down packs or maybe the cost was too high. And this way they can just buy a, you know, buy one box. Because everyone, everyone, like the whole LCG model is supposed to be like, oh, you buy it monthly. And it's just small monthly payments. But for Arkham LCG, you don't buy it in small. You literally buy six packs plus a deluxe box. And that is a one cost. That's the sticker price. Nobody's buying it like pack by pack to just play it pack by or pack. buying like pack two and pack four, yeah, not buying yeah. the ones in the middle. So this way, at least it's cheaper overall because the boxes, I think, are less expensive than buying all those products separate, like deluxe box, six expansions, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I could be wrong. But at least it's cheaper that you don't have to pay shipping if you do or drive to your game store multiple times. You just get all the cards and, and that whole... All at once as well. Yeah, and that whole statement about going forward with new stuff the way now they're not restricted to selling six packs and trying to make a scenario fit in one plastic uh, plastic case to hang on a shelf or whatever. Now they just go, it has to fit in this box. So now they can add more stuff, do crazier things. They can add like those enemy modular packs. Now when you're playing scenario five, they can assume that you have like, they could throw things in there and they know you have it. Right. But before they can't call on other enemy packs from other... Uh, mythos packs because they don't know if you own them or not so that limitation is in the existing game that limitation goes away yeah i was very excited when they said that yeah yeah because so, that can change the way the campaign works yeah so little things like that should make the game better going forward even though it's just a release model but it's better for the player too mm -hmm. so that's i think great. it's better for everyone because it's better for the stores as well they can hopefully carry more but yeah the uh star uh the the outer rim expansion that's great Glad that's coming. Glad yeah. there's more for the game. So it's not dead and gone. They didn't lose the Star Wars license. They are going to still make Star Wars board games, which is great. They didn't lose it to another publisher under Asmodee or anything like that. So that's still coming. So that's cool that they've been working on that. Yeah, Outer Rim was fun when we played it. I, we played it not too long ago. So a fun. Adam says in the chat here, Adam's saying, uh, let me get your comment up here, Adam. Adam saying, disappointed they didn't give an update on the Mad Titan release in the USA. He did give an update saying, I'm not going to talk about any release dates today for anything. They don't know. Because of the shipping crisis, yeah. the, the the trying to get a shipping container. Like, if you go read any Kickstarter update or Chip Theory Games updates, they, like, let you know how hard it is to find out if you can even you get a container to ship your product from a Chinese factory. Some of the stuff's just sitting at Chinese factories waiting to find a truck or a container to even get it onto a ship. And then they're doing like negotiating and bidding and, you know, they're overpaying. So they're like, if you want this container, you know, give me, you know, an extra, you know, $10,000 you can use in this container or whatever. And then they're like, no, no, no. Then they start a bidding war on the next container. It's crazy. So that's why they have no idea. They have no idea. So I, I'm, I'm okay with going back to the, the way board gaming was before, until, before Asmodee started buying up companies was we just never knew. There was no dates. Right. Things just came out whenever. But then Asmodee started buying up publishers and tried to do this whole like worldwide release date thing, which is great, great thing to do. They do it in movies, they do it in video games. They, you got to do it in all media. It just makes sense. It helps build up hype. It's great for marketing. It's great for social media marketing. It's everyone talking about it at the same time. You know, great for sales. Um, but now with this, this issue, you can't do that in any industry. So I, I'm fine. Just make the great stuff. When it comes, it comes. Like, yeah, we just can't be all like, come on, where's my stuff? You, you got great games on your shelf. Just relax. It's not their fault. Um, so, yeah, that's the way that I'd say. But they did address it. They said they weren't going to talk about it. So <laughs> they were like, nope, no dates. Yeah. No dates for you. Yeah. So I think they I just also don't want to say dates and then they have to break them again. Yeah. It yep, just yep. makes them look bad. Yeah. <clears throat> And Bob says, that's correct. The new release model will change the way Yogi and everyone else makes <laughs> decks for you. Yes, that's correct. That is true. <laughs> Maybe I just play with the pre-built decks that come in all the sets now. So nobody has to build decks for me because they're now going to come with all pre-built decks. At least I think. At least that's what they're doing for the new expansion, right? Uh, for the player cards. I believe they're coming with pre-built decks, but I could be I think wrong. for the for the Oh, just for the core set. Yeah. Just for the core set. Yeah, yeah. Only, I think, yeah. So I'll just play with those core set decks the whole way through. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, it was just the core just set, the, the core revised set. core yeah. set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brian, this is where I'm at. Brian says, "I agree, Rob. Uh, there are so many games now. I no longer worry about when I get a game as long as it eventually arrives." Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. 
Like, just let them work on their games, let them make the best games, let them try to negotiate the best prices to get the game to you so they're not losing money and go out of business. Just let them do their thing. You'll get it when you get it. If it's crappy when you get it, then complain all day and vote with your wallet. Don't back future projects. Don't buy future games. Rant about it online, whatever you got to do. Um, but yeah. But if the game comes eventually and it's still great, can't be mad. Can't be mad. Uh, Successful Geek saying, oh, did they announce the death of Journey's Middle Earth? No, they announced... Yeah. Well, they, they announced that it's going to end, but they announced that they're just going to release another DLC campaign just like they did for the past two big deluxe boxes and then a standalone uh, miniature pack, whatever that's called. So I am not playing this expansion, uh, the Spreading War, until I get that little box. I'm until not playing it. Until I can it. paint it. Yep, I'm not yeah. playing it. Because we want those minis, those minis in that, those, those they're supposed minis, to go in that yeah, campaign. Those two or three minis they put in that tiny little box, they should be in the, the deluxe box already. It bugs the hell out of me. And I hate that way you have to play with a generic mini when that mini shows up. But then later they give it to you later after you're already done playing the campaign. So I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to wait, get that final product, throw it in, the extra little cards they give you. Like what the hell's the point of buying it after you've already played the campaign? It doesn't make sense. I don't know why they do that. That release model was stupid. I'm glad it's ending to be honest. Um, but hopefully that, you know, it's enough content that people don't feel ripped up, ripped off, but. Uh, Heather's here. Heather says, Journey's Middle Earth is not dead. There's more coming from what I heard. They did say there's did another say. DLC campaign and another small miniature box, but that's all they've committed to. Yeah, this is their last. Well, they said this is their last, their final big box. And this is like the final part of the story. Yeah. So. So they're moving on to other stuff. Yeah. Maybe it's not selling as well. Maybe the expansions are not selling at all. But they did the same thing for Mansion Madness too, no? Didn't they say that the they're done with the big boxes for that too? Yeah, but Mansion Madness, they released like tons of true, expansions. True, Tons. True. Tons of them. It was so much. True. Uh, whatever, whatever. Um, just looking through the comments, uh, just see. <laughs> Jamal's got a question, so now I should buy Outer Rim. <laughs> I mean, that's it's up, up to, to you. you. Do your research. If you're a Star Wars fan, it's a good game. It's a good game. Yeah, it's fun. I liked it a lot. The solo's okay. The solo is okay, but it's definitely, you can tell, it's a fun game to like play with other players. Yeah, we played with two players, but I think you yeah. want to play with more players I as do, well I, to try. I, I think it'd be a little yeah. more fun. I need to play a little more players. I yeah. think it'd be hilarious. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, it definitely felt like a game that, that is, is, was built for expansions in mind. And they, this will be their first expansion for it, right? Is that correct or am I yeah, wrong? Yeah. yeah, first expansion, yep. Yeah. Uh, why is it not working? Uh, Kanji's here. Hey, Kanji. Hello. Asking, what Kickstarter slash game found? No, the word you need is, what crowdfunded? <laughs> what crowdfunded board gaming project have you had your eye on lately? Uh, um, the ones that I get updates on that are already back that are being delayed by like a year. Th those are the ones I had my eye on. Yeah, the ones that aren't so, here yet. So I back so many games that have now gotten emails or updates about being delayed that I just don't care about new ones right now. I still want the ones I backed before. Yeah. So like we found out today, 7th Citadel, I joked about it. 7th Citadel, when they said it was coming out in May of 2022, I joked and said, yeah, right, September 2022 at the earliest. Now they announced the earliest is like December of 2022. It's going to start shipping to people, which you all know that's an estimate way too far in advance. So we're lucky if we see 7th Citadel by like mid-2023. I'm calling it now. June 2023, stay tuned for live streams on Rob's gaming table of Seven Citadel. Mark my words, you'll see. Yeah, and you joked about that when, when uh, you backed it. Yeah, and that was before COVID, before the shipping issues, all that yeah. stuff. So, you know, yeah. uh, all the Kickstarters. 
Frost even every month a new update has a delay in, yeah they in just it. keep backing it a month yeah every every right from the beginning like one of the first updates was like uh I'm hi I'm Isaac Childress I broke my finger the game's delayed <laughs> like funny. literally it was yeah. I broke my finger the game's delayed yeah what like what yeah uh, okay <laughs> sure yeah. and then later was this happened it's a delay that happened it's a delay this is a delay that's a delay so it's like, eh, it's like, just do the damn game and, and come out whenever. I don't care. Yeah. But basically, there's so many games I thought I'd be playing this year. Frosthaven, Old Sworn. Uh, I don't even know. There's other games. There's other ones that... There's there's yeah. tons. I, I have tons of games, even from... A lot of them were on that list that we saw that uh, now say Fall. Yeah. From FFG. Uh, there's also <laughs> ones from other publishers that, that, were, that had games that said they wanted me to play their game. I said, whenever it's finished, let me know. I'll, I'll take a copy. Even those games I checked on. Uh, that I didn't back, that I was getting a, a, like a review copy for. I have been told it's delayed, that's delayed. Don't like, you know. Mm -hmm. So either I'm going to have a really busy 2022 slash 2023 or these, some of these games are never coming. I don't know. So right now when a publisher or, uh, you know, or, you know, two people who are running a company, whatever, some of these people on Kickstarter who come out of nowhere, you never heard of, who are like, look at my board game full of miniatures, cool fantasy adventure game that, that usually I'd be super excited about. I see that now and I'm like, man, I already have ones that are coming I'm going to be busy with. Like, what do I care about your game for? You're telling me it comes out in a year or two? Pfft. It's probably four years from now. Like, I, why Why do I care about backing your game right now? Mm -hmm. That's just where I'm at. I, I'm feeling like very bummed that I back so many games that I feel like I was like already weary about getting them and now they're like all delayed. So like, it, it's a tough sell for me right now. It's definitely a tough sell. Um, and most of those games I'm looking at now are like, I'll just wait and see. Yeah, um, I'm really heavily on the like, show me something on your page that makes me want to throw money at you now. And most of these games are just make me feel like I'll just wait till it comes out later. And if it's really good and it does really good reviews and all this stuff, maybe I'll look into it and I'll back the second Kickstarter or I'll buy it at retail or secondary market if that's the case. So yeah, that's just where I am. So right now there's literally no Kickstarters or game founds that I've been looking at that have really made me just go, yeah. There were there was a, some that we talked there, about. There were a couple in the summer, a couple yeah. months ago. There was uh, the one by Andrew Navarro's company. Um, Earthborn Rangers. Earthborn Rangers. That one looked cool. I mm -hmm. definitely want to get a hold of that game at some point. Yep. Um, but that Kickstarter happened already. I don't know if late pledges are still open. I kind of not on a wait and see. They weren't really that far along with the game, it seemed. Uh, there's still tons of work to be done on it for like the next year, so we'll see. But that's a game I would love to play in the future. It looked really cool. Um, and, uh, there was the other one from the guys that do, um, we talked about it before, Aridia? Aridia, yeah. Aridia. Yeah, we looked at that one. Looked interesting. Yep. But again. I'm not sure, though. It was, I was interested at yeah. first, but then I'm not sure. Yeah, so it's so like. So I'm waiting for more information. Yeah. Yeah. But Kanji, what are, what are you interested in? What, what games have been blowing your socks off? I see you post some in, in the Discord. But you kind of post like everything. <laughs> so I don't know if you're posting it because you like it or you're posting it just because like, hey, somebody else might like this. But uh, yeah, what, what, are the, what are the top that you're, you're all into? Uh, Sasha says, well, I mean, well, I understand your position, Rob, but it's not anyone's fault. Uh, it has going crazy if i find a game that's worthy i'll wait why not i don't know i have a pile of games i still need to play so that's the other thing too so it's hard when it's like oh i have all these games like i, I don't know i can't predict the future yeah but when it what, what happens what i've learned though and i've talked about this before is if a game is really amazing like gloomhaven it hit everyone after got it on the first kickstarter went nuts for it and then I, I looked into it. I started seeing reviews and I'm like, wow, this game, I heard about it the first time, but it, I didn't really seem to care about the first Kickstarter. I just went, oh, okay, whatever. But then when the second Kickstarter came out and there was a second chance to get it, I went, great, I got it. Did I have any less fun with, with Gloomhaven because I backed it on the second Kickstarter and I waited for a bunch of suckers to back it the first time, play it and tell me how great it was? Yeah, get all the bugs and kinks out of it. Yeah, and then they improved some things in the game on the second run. Yeah, uh, good things come to those who wait. Uh, and if a game is great, I'll be able to get it later. And if I can't, well, don't worry. There's another great game I can play. So FOMO is, 
I, I have a permanent FOMO. I took my, I got my FOMO vaccine and uh, I'm immune to FOMO now. Yeah, it took a while, but yeah, it, did take a while. it did take a while. Let's not yeah, lie. For like six or seven years when I was in the hobby, yeah, I was backing things out of nowhere. I was convincing Mel, like, look at this dragon miniature, Mel. We should back this Kickstarter. <laughs> Is there a game with that miniature? <laughs> Shut up. We're backing it. All in. All in. Yeah, we do a lot more research now. So no offense it. to anyone who's in the hobby, has the disposable income, or just new to the hobby, and you're backing stuff left and right. Go nuts. Yeah. But just understand, I'm being honest, and this is how I'm looking at it. You do not have to agree with me at all. I don't care. Uh, but that's just where I'm at. I got tons of shells full of games that I played. Some I want to play more of. I got games in Shrink. I got games I still have to play. Like I said, I probably have 15, 16 games that are coming at some point. I have no idea when. Yeah. So like... Maybe more? I have no shortage of games that I need to go on Kickstarter and start backing games that maybe will come out. Maybe they'll come out in a couple of years, maybe three years. Maybe they'll suck. Maybe they won't. I don't know. Yeah, nothing's wowing me right now. But yeah. And even those games, like I said, Iridia and Earthborn Rangers, they were cool, but nothing was like, oh, gotta take my money. Like, this is so new and crazy. Like, I could be wrong when I play them. I hope I'm kind of like blown away and I'm having a good time and they're worth the money. But again, I, I don't know. So. Uh... So Jamos mentioned something here. Uh, so it's promoting a board game co. Watch board game co. Uh, Alec does a great uh, to back or not to back. I do watch board game co's videos. He's yep. been in our chat before. I've watched his stuff. Yep. But keep in mind, he comes at it from uh, usually a value proposition. So I don't really sell games on a secondary market. He actually no. runs a business selling pre-played games and 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 secondary markets. He has a whole business he's generated before he got, made his YouTube channel. And I believe he has employees and everything, but he runs a website, Board Game Co., sell, like buying Kickstarters all in, playing them, and not liking them, and then selling them to people. Yeah. And, and, and making money off, like, like kind of like stock investment kind of ideas, my understanding. I've never bought anything from there, so I don't know exactly. But keep in mind, he's, he's usually coming at it from like a, if you back this and it sucks, can you sell it and make your money back? That doesn't matter to me because I would rather just not buy it at all. Yeah. I don't need to put a whole bunch of money uh, into Kickstarter or GameFound. It's not like when I put my money into the stock market uh, and it, it most likely, if you do it right, uh, will slowly go up over time. Uh, this, I could be putting money in there and the money only goes down in value usually. There are some games you can get all in and you can get them and then they become so hot and you can't get them anymore and then you can sell them for tons on eBay or whatever. I'm just not in the business. Yeah, we don't do that. Of, I'm not in the business of posting on eBay and sitting there and trying to bidding wars and packaging games and reselling them and like, no, no, that's not for me. That's not for me. Uh, so I, I love when he goes over some of these games because he brings games to my attention that I never thought of, that I didn't know about. And sometimes we find out on his channel about like I'll be watching one of his videos and he'll mention like, oh, you can late black this one now actually. And sometimes I find out about games that I, I now know they're good that I can still get in and back them, you know, before they're out. So it's kind of cool. So that's stuff I appreciate. But just keep in mind, you know, I, I just because he says it's a good back or not a good back, uh, it's, you know, I, I, it's, he looks at it from a different uh, perspective than I look at it. But yes, I do appreciate his content for sure. If you guys are interested in that, uh, he's got some good insight on things and he does play a lot of stuff. Yeah. So definitely. We, we usually yeah. don't tell you to buy a game ever. That is your decision, yeah. right? We can't... I just try to prevent, yeah. present information. Yeah. So I'm playing the game on the channel to show you how turns work, how the mechanics work. You can see us if we're having fun with it or not, and that kind of thing. And part of it's for entertainment. We're playing it live, yeah. you know, playing with you guys, having a good time, interacting with the chat and stuff. Um, but I leave it up to you guys, because there's always like the, I don't know what your financial situation is. I don't know what games you have on your shelf. You know, I, I don't know what you're into. I don't know what your game group likes. I, I don't know the yeah, complexity. Yeah, so many of, variables. Yeah, what kind of, how many pages in a rule book before you just can't learn the game? You know what I mean? Like, like what is the complexity level you play? There is so many things I can't just tell you. I can never say, guys, buy this game. It's a must buy. You must have it. Yeah. Because you could buy it and it's like, man, this you hate card drafting. You hate dice in games. You hate randomness. You hate, you know, you know, variable player powers you just that makes you throw up in your mouth i don't know so i can't tell you that this game is for you but what i can do is play the game and, and you show can, you and you can see it and you can make an educated guess on the play um but do your research 
Don't just use one person as your, you know, if Board Game Co. tells you, buy this game, it's, it's a safe back or whatever he calls it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I would definitely do a little more research, look into it. What, what are the mechanics? Go read on BGG, kind of see what, you know, what family games, what have the designer made before? What has that p company published before? Go turn around and look at your board game shelf. What's on it? What games did you like? What games didn't you like? See if those mechanics are in that game and that kind of thing. So yeah, that's, it's like hard. It's hard for me to tell you yay or nay on a game. Um, but yeah, I do appreciate when they present information. Mm -hmm. So I definitely will watch Board Game Co. and be like, man, that guy throws a lot of info. And it's sometimes there's really good info in there. And I will be like, all right, yeah. Oh, mm, that makes sense. Okay. So Bob is saying here, you don't tell us to buy games. Explain Robin Mel maybe buy it. I didn't, I didn't we make didn't that tell hashtag. You, and we didn't tell you to buy it ever. Hashtag. We never will tell you to buy a game. If you buy it and you want to blame us for your own personal... Um, that's fine. I you didn't know, make, sometimes people I didn't need, make the hashtag. Sometimes people need a <laughs> need a reason or need to blame someone else. But we will never say to we'll never tell you to buy a game. That's your decision. But if you want to blame us on your end, that's fine. <laughs> oh, and Sasha's reminding me. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Sasha's reminding me. Uh, oh, yeah, research you. reminds me. Rob. Well, I just forgot. Just don't forget to look into Assassin's Creed. I really would love to see you guys play that. I feel like you would love it. Want to play along then? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll look into it. Um, I, yeah, I didn't know. I think maybe somebody told me about it, but I, again, I didn't know. And again, I never played the video games. They weren't really my jam. I played the first one, and I didn't really like the mechanics in it. It just wasn't for me. So, yeah. But, that, I, I mean, it looks cool. The, the theme and all that stuff is awesome. Uh, in all of them, but yeah, I just uh, yeah, just not not for me. But I, I would play a board game of it for sure. So boss says uh, you told me to buy all the games I got this week. That's what I tell the Listen. wife. Listen, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Some people need a justification. So, so it was or... your wife that was calling me with the death threats. <laughs> I gave her the number of my lawyer because I'm not held. Res I I cannot legally be held responsible yeah. for any. Any relationships that break up, any creditors calling you because you ran out of money because you bought all the cool games I showed you, okay? So, so now what I you're saying... be held responsible. So what people are saying is, now before the stream starts, we need to put up a disclaimer yeah, that yeah. says, we are not responsible if you purchase this game after you see it. Yeah. <laughs> but I hope for every, every time we show a game for one person that buys it, I hope there's one person that sees it and goes, you know, oh, good, perfect. I see the way they're showing me this game and Rob's talking about being frustrated by this or that. You know, like I also get frustrated about those things or the good things he's talking about are things that bug me. So I, I don't think that game's right for me. I just hope I present it that you see everything about the game, the good, the bad, in my opinion, and then can equate that to what is good and bad in your opinion and kind of like help you, you know? And I think through just comments, we have seen that that's the case through comments afterwards or in the live chat. People have said. Can just saying, Rob, maybe buy Explore It, and Mel, maybe buy This War of Mine. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I mean, those are good purchases. I'm not going to lie. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, Sasha, or any divorces that might be caused by watching. Yep, I cannot be held responsible. <laughs> no, no, I no. I need to have a lawyer write up, like, a, a disclaimer. Disclaimer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I need to protect myself. Hey, I'm an advocate for spouses <laughs> should play together. And then maybe it'll be easier to justify some of those purchases. I don't know. Just saying. And Michael's saying, I looked at my Kickstarter list. Totally forgot about librarians and tiny epic dungeons. Yeah, oh. see? If I you're for forgetting about Kickstarter, I already forget about half the games either publishers are saying they're going to send or Kickstarters I back. Again, I only keep remembering like Frosthaven, Oldsworn, the big, Seven like Citadel. The big named ones. But there are many others. And some I don't want to say because if they don't show up or something weird, I don't want to promise and then they don't happen. Or, or I get them, I play them, and I'm like... Nah, this is not it. I don't really want to present this on the channel or something. Then, yeah, so. I was very sad by the delay of Oathsworn. I really was hoping for it. I was even talking to Rob, like, it's oh, I have. It's not even the first delay. No, I know, but I thought it was more set in stone with this one. And then I was like, I have a week vacation, and I can paint it. And I was getting all excited because I thought it was coming next month. And then I got a little sad about that. But... Uh, speaking of the FOMO, Kenji says, I have FOMO, but only for certain companies. I can understand yeah, that. Yeah, I can understand that. I have a weak spot for certain companies, too. Uh, but he says, I'm done with Simon, and I want nothing they offer. Yeah, we've been you done with Simon for a while. You say that now until they, they come up with an IP that just that hits you right on the button, and they actually put a good game with it. Um, but it's been a while. It's been a while. 
Did uh, Bloodborne uh, burn you a little bit there, Kanji? Did uh, the blood was Bloodborne the, the the what do you call it the straw that broke the camel's back? I mean that game looked fine, but I I don't know if it's worth the money from what I read about it. It stopped me from buying it just looking into it when it finally came out. I watched some playthroughs, uh, some reviews. I read some things online, and then I was just like, "Yep, I can't." I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't back it. I didn't want to buy it at retail to try it. Oh, Bloodborne was not for you. But the game was okay though, right? Like it was still a decent game is what I understood. But yeah, it didn't look great for me either. But um, yeah. Dan is twisting my words here, Dan. I'm just, I'm seeing your comment and that's not what I meant. <laughs> this one? Yes. I'm going to try to get my wife to play with my... Covered miniatures. <laughs> hey, hey, whoa. Where because I said that I encourage oh, I spouses guess, to play games I, together, and Dan I, is taking that a little bit too far. I see. It's because it's after 9 p.m. We're now officially into Rob after dark hours in the Eastern time zone here. Uh, so Dan's, Dan's just like letting it go here. Yeah, yeah. He's twisting some of my words around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, uh, that's the other thing Brian's mentioning. At least all Simon games come to retail. I like the way you say eventually. But you can replace eventually with before backers get it. Yeah, that's terrible. Before backers will get it, it'll be at retail. You'll find it at a Target exclusivity deal or something. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I don't back like the He-Man game, the Masters of the Universe, whatever it's called, uh, whatever they name the subtitle of it. Again, I'm not backing that thing. I don't want to pay the overinflated Kickstarter price to cover all the costs of the stretch goals and the extra stuff I'll never play with, uh, all the upgrades and all that stuff. Don't need them, don't care, because most come on games, you get the full gameplay after like three playthroughs, you pretty much can just throw in the garbage after that. Especially when they don't throw campaigns in like this one, no campaign, it's just scenarios. It looks like a Zombicide level game, um, but it's just like they're just trying to make money off of I, uh, miniatures based on the Masters of the Universe IP, trying to get your nostalgia money, man, getting in your wallet. Yeah. Uh, the game doesn't look like anything crazy. It just looks like I, I, from my understanding, the way I was reading, I skimmed through some of the rules, but it started to give me the vibe of a Funkoverse game a little more advanced than that. Mm -hmm. Not much, not much more advanced, but it's like playing Funkoverse on an overproduced board with overproduced miniatures, which are fine. Some people, that's, that's what they want. That's great. Um, but I, don't, I just don't want to pay overpay on Kickstarter and all the crazy shipping costs when I can just go get it cheaper at my local game store and my local game store gets a cut too uh because you know yeah yeah that's just where i'm at with that <clears throat> so yeah come on just keeps pumping out these games and i'll just pick up the ones that are actually good i'll just get them at retail later that's that's kind of where i'm at with that publisher now and i know a lot of people are like that <clears throat> so yeah that's where i'm at Th those ones don't excite me i agree with this statement uh, if it stops moving. Jamo says, Zombicide is great, mindless fun. Oh, I 100% agree with that. I love Agreed. Zombicide. It was one of the first games that we uh, started playing with other players. And that game alone, I pulled in a whole bunch of people into the hobby with. Because mm -hmm. it was so easy to explain it, especially when Walking Dead was hot on TV. It was like, yeah, you want to play basically Walking Dead the board game all together, rolling like mist, uh, a, a fistful of dice and, and, and like so many miniatures on the table, you can't even fit them on a space. And it was mm -hmm. fun just to get into that that with people and get excited and stuff. Yeah. This it, is, I remember, yeah. Zombicide was one of the first games that I was like, yes, Rob, please back this game. Like, yeah. I love them. As soon as the next one was announced, yeah. I was like, I was all in. Yeah. But Loved then, it. And, that, and then we started getting them and realizing we're they playing were the same game over and over again. And we're like... I was hoping every time something different, something different. It, it's like the Skyrim joke earlier, like buying Skyrim over and over again, you know? Yeah. It, it was, it's like that. Like, you just buy the next Zombicide... It's just the same game over and over again. They put no extra effort into yeah. it. It's just like if you already own one or two of them, you don't need all of them. It's just like not worth it. Not worth it. So yeah. if, just buy one Zombicide, get in your collection, have some fun with some people with it if they like the theme. And it's great. But beyond that, it's like, yeah. Yeah, you don't need any more. No. no. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm very sad they never put any kind of campaign, really. Well, they did in well, second edition, but as an extra expansion you no, had to buy. that's not what I mean. Like, like an afterthought. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, Stacy says, which song would you recommend? Uh, I, I never played it, but it probably the easiest one to find right now is the Zombicide second edition, like the modern theme, whatever. Yeah, like the revamped one. But if you like a uh, sci-fi theme, 
Zombicide Invader was a pretty good game. Yeah. And so was Black, uh, no, um, uh, Black Plague. Black Plague, yes. If you like fantasy, Zombicide Black Pe Plague was my favorite one. Don't buy Zombicide Green Horde. <laughs> that, that was, no, no, don't start with that one. That one's junk. Uh, but Zombicide Black Plague was pretty fun. If you like fantasy. Uh, and then, uh, and then Invader. Invader, Invader was, was pretty fun. cool. It was it's, a little bit different. It yeah, felt a little bit different. It, I mean, the, it still had still that cool sci-fi theme. Yeah. It, it had a cool sci-fi theme, some cool mechanics to work with the theme. It felt a little different than a regular Zombicide, which was cool. I was a little bit fresh, but then after you played a few times, you're just like, oh, if it had a campaign that connected the, the yeah. things together yeah. where you could like grow and earn things yeah. and stuff. That's exactly what it felt like yeah. it was missing. And after so many, you think they would have put that in there. But. Uh, oh, there's the Night of the Living Dead one. I just don't know how easy that is to find. Is that oh, one? We've that... never played that one. Yeah, I haven't played that one either, but that one might appeal to you. Just go pick whichever one is like the best theme and that's at your local game store or online that has like a decent price to it. Like, yeah. Yeah, Black Plague yeah, it seems was like really Black cool. Black Plague is also what the chat is saying yeah. is, is a favorite. It was very fun. And we have videos on a whole bunch of different ones, so you can look at them yeah. if you care to see. But we just never, like, by the time they announced the second edition one, where they rebooted it and then they have a campaign expansion, I was done with it. I saw them announce that at Gen Con, I saw it all and was like, nope, I'm no sorry. More. Uh, no more. No more. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Stop it. But we have so much for Zombicide, yep. it's insane. It's nope. insane. We have so much that we have never even played. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Uh, I think it was... Oh, I can't, I'm so sorry. It's, it was Stacy or Heather. I'm so sorry. One of you was asking, um, they're asking what kind of table we have. Uh, we have a, uh, it's a table from boardgametables.com. Go to the website, boardgametables.com, if they're local to you. If not, there's so many other ones out there in all different countries. So you find the one in your country. Uh, but yeah, boardgametables.com, you'll see them at conventions and stuff. We're playing on, it's uh, the Duchess, but now it's called the Jasper. Oh, Stacy. okay, thank you. Yeah, it's Sorry. called the Jasper, uh, and you can, it's like a pretty cheap table. You can customize some stuff about it, but they like kind of mass produce it a little bit, so it's like a little bit cheaper, uh, and, and you just have to kind of like put it together a little bit when you get it. You just got to slap the legs on or whatever, but... And it's three by five, right? Three by five, three by five. like the standard board game table size, yeah. Yeah. So when you hear me calling a table hog out uh, on a game, it's because it's for two player taking up an entire three by five table pretty much yeah. where you expect to have six players at that table space with most board games. So that's when you hear me say table hog, that's when that's what I mean. But we have another table we play on. It's like a giant Ikea, like expandable kitchen table thing upstairs mm -hmm. that uh, fits 10, 10 players comfortably around it. Yeah. Uh, and we've played up to, I think, eight players on it before playing giant Game of Thrones board game sessions and stuff. Uh, but that's where I play my games for playing off stream or practicing or when we have people over and stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's why I'm not us I don't usually care too much about how much space a game takes up. Unless I'm having trouble getting it on camera for a stream. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I have we have three different tables we play board games on of all different sizes. So. Yeah. But the main one that you guys see is yeah. this one, the 3x5. And if it can't fit on 3x5, I have toppers I can put on this one that expands it about 3 inches off each side, or maybe 6 inches with, with the overhang and stuff, so I can make the table a bit bigger too. Dan says 10 players, I'd have to invite 9 strangers to play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you wouldn't. <laughs> um, Green Horde was okay. It was okay. But it, it felt like there was no effort put into it. The new mechanics weren't anything to write home that about. That was the one that introduced the bushes and yeah, that, right? Yeah, the bushes, yeah. the water, the, the map tiles were so bland and boring. It just felt and like they were just... some of them were, were just, hard to tell, too, yeah. what, the, what it was supposed to be, whether it was building outside. I yeah. remember it was a little I, bit... I wouldn't recommend starting with it, but yeah. if you got Black Plague and you played so much of it, you're like, I need more then you could grab either an expansion for Black Plague to add more into the game, or yes, get Green Horde as kind of an expansion and add it in. Yeah. But I'm just saying, don't start with Green Horde because it's not the best entry point. Right. It's it like was a, fun, don't get me wrong. It's an okay add-on. Yeah. But, but if you started with that, you might be a little disappointed with yeah, the game. Yeah, it felt lame. I don't know. It just felt yeah. like they were like just doing their like, oh. It's that time again. It's time to do another Zombicide Kickstarter. Uh, what are you guys working on? Uh, yeah. We kind of got this green 
horde thing going on with these like playing tiles and look we made some plastic bushes and stuff and or, or not even plastic in the base game the like cardboard bushes and things like let's just throw that in and and you know let's whip out another game and it's just the scenarios where literally we were playing through each scenario in that game we got like I don't know how many scenarios in six, seven, seven eight. or eight. seven, maybe seven. It was literally the same scenario over and over and over again. Yeah. There was no creativity whatsoever in those scenarios. It was the biggest ripoff of the 10 scenarios I've ever seen. They just got lazy with we it. Keep, we kept playing thinking, oh, it's going to change, it's going to change. And I know we make jokes with Madara yeah. about that with the blue exit and, you know, things like that. No, but it's but not bad But this was like that. worse. Yeah, yeah. It, it, exactly, Michael. It, it felt like minimal effort. Yeah. Like, it felt like they were not inspired to make something amazing. They were just like, let's get this done so we can start working on Zombicide Invader or whatever at the time, you know? Like they weren't, yeah. That's my opinion, though. That's yes, my opinion. exactly. Green Horde might well, have been your favorite Zombicide. It seems like some of the chat is also agreeing. But I, yeah, I see so nobody here saying they disagree. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, take I that for no what it's worth. Eh? But we're not saying that it's bad. It just is not maybe would, where you would start. I would just play Black Plague first if you like the fantasy theme. Then after that, I would decide if you need more and go mm -hmm. there. But don't start with Green Horde because you find it in stock on sale. Still buy Black Plague, even if you have to pay a little more for it. It'll be worth it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Anything in the FFG stream that we uh, didn't talk about, about being excited about, it kind of like went pretty quick. It was very fast. So uh, we mentioned the Marvel Champion stuff, all good. Uh, the Arkham Horror news, all good. Mm -hmm. um, the Lord of the Rings repackaging, great, all great. Um, Outer Rim expansion, great. We hope it's great, but it's good that they're still supporting the game. Descent, more descent. More descent, yeah. And Bayside Junior, thank you so much for subscribing. Much appreciated. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, the descent stuff. I was glad they said descent's fine. They obviously it didn't sell as well because they were, you know, showing articles from places that they sent review copies to that wrote our web articles and are like, look at all these people who are having a blast with the game. Uh, please play our game. Uh, so I don't think it sold as well as it did because that's kind of like a red flag. They weren't like, it blew our minds. Like, they're just like, people are having fun with it. If you haven't checked it out, you really should. So that kind of like is not the way a company presents something when it's like, we can't even keep up with demand. But the fact that they were like, we're all in means it sold well enough. That they're still working on the second act. They're working on giant miniatures, you know, new enemies, all this stuff, new stories, everything. So I'm excited. We're about to wrap that game up soon, I think. I think so, yeah. And I'll be super excited for more of it. Same. I, um, I just hope they play test the app scenarios a little more before we get it to make sure there's no game-breaking bugs. There weren't really game-breaking bugs, per se. Mm, I mean... But still, getting everyone together, if you're getting your whole game group together or getting everyone to meet at a game store or doing a whole live stream around a playthrough and the app starts locking up on you and you have to replay some progress and stuff and those kind of game bugs break, game breaking bugs happen, that's like, you know, that sucks. Yeah. That sucks. But hopefully they, you know, learn from this one and, and can do better with that. But uh, Heather is, yeah, says, Heather. so here, uh, yeah. we want a little more information from you here. So you so Heather says, some of the stuff I'm excited for from FFG wasn't talked about. So are you allowed to talk about it? No. What she, you know? I, no, I would assume not. Maybe, yeah, I Supposedly guess. Supposedly Heather knows. Maybe it's... Heather knows some stuff. Yeah, Heather knows some stuff. And I wanted her to tell me after the stream about that stuff, but it sounds like they didn't even bring it up, so we can't talk about it. Yeah, that's too bad. I wish you could drop, like, I wish secret could... code words yeah. or something. or yeah. That we could play, like, just get us guessing. But then again, I, I wouldn't want to get you in trouble or anything. No, so. of course, of yeah. course. Of course. But is it... Heather, can you tell me this? You watch the channel. You just heard what I'm excited about coming from them. You know I love the Marvel IP stuff. You know I love the Lord of the Rings stuff. I love the Game of Thrones stuff. I, I, the, you know, the Arkham stuff. Star Wars. All, all this stuff. 
Oh, you hinted earlier in chat. Wait, what? I love it all. I read all of the chat, but... It, I... Is it something we would be excited about, Mel and I, after you've heard what we've been saying? Just tell me that. That's all I need to know. You hinted earlier. Oh, because you thought they were going to talk about it, probably. Oh, so I need to reread the Now we got to decipher the chat. chat. <laughs> now we got to go through the whole chat and comb through to find <laughs> Heather's cryptic yeah. messages. <laughs> She just puts like a random address where you have to go and find like a, a clue <laughs> under a statue. And then we have to go like on an airplane, travel on, like, across. like a scavenger hunt? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, uh, I, I think, think you'll you like it. it. Ah. Okay. Well, I mean, that's good enough for us. Yeah, I'm down. That's good enough for us. <laughs> Say says <this> timestamp. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do that? Can you control F the whole chat? I don't know. I don't know if you can do I don't know if Let we can try. do that. Whoops, oh. I just randomly click on something. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, while you're doing that, Michael is asking, is Zombicide soloable? Yes, but mm. you have to... Well, you, there's a caveat. You do have to play all six characters, but it's not super challenging. I think there's a rule for playing with, like, less characters, but then you have to, like, increase spawn points or, or reduce spawn... There's there's some variant rules to it. Yeah. Where you can play with less characters. Um, yeah. but it's recommended to play with the full six. Everything's balanced with running six characters. Yeah. Which is not hard in that game. It's just a lot of stuff on the table that you have to just manage. Um, Heather says hot. Is that, oh, is that a clue? H-O-T? Yeah. Oh. Hot. Is that a clue of some kind? It's a game based in a desert. So, I mean, we have lots of smart brains in the chat here. We could probably decipher something. <laughs> uh, oh, Heather said before, um, you had teased more to come for Euthia. Hmm. Any idea when we can expect that or what is cooking? So about every couple of months, I get an email from the designer of the designers and, and some of the people at work at uh, on Uthia, and they kind of let me know what's going on, and uh, yeah, just the same updates you guys are probably seeing on on the Kickstarter update. So, uh, I guess I can say I'm gonna have a copy before a lot of you who backed it. I'm sorry, um, but I'm gonna be respectful to not tick everyone off. And I'm going to hold off on playing it uh, a little bit. But when I get it, I'm going to do an unboxing. And we will just have a nice chill stream where we open it. We can go through it. We can talk about it. And we'll rip through the rules. Whatever whatever you guys want to see. Except for gameplay. And then, you know, a little bit later, we'll, we'll don't you worry. We'll be doing gameplay streams. If you didn't back it and you're unsure. And you didn't know if the, you know, the company is going to put out a good game. I'll let you know if it's, you know, meets, beats my expectations, if it was as good as their prototype was or better, all that stuff. You'll see that on the channel. I'll give you my thoughts when we play it. Um, but yeah, we're definitely playing it through on the channel. Yeah. I can't give you exact dates because I'm working with them on like trying to line it up with some stuff they're working on. Um, and yeah, they haven't given me dates yet of roughly when. But they told me I could play it if I really wanted to, but I'm, I'm going to be respectful and I'm going to play it a little bit later, but uh, yeah, so I'll be playing it more probably around when you guys are getting your copies and stuff. Um, but yeah, I should have it any day now, to be honest. But that's, that's all I'm going to say. So yeah. But I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I know, wait. I cannot wait. Uh, we had so much fun playing the that game. The prototype was amazing. The game yeah. was so fun. I was so excited. Yeah. I'm excited, to know to, it's coming. I'm excited to see the improvements. I gave feedback on the game after I played it. Let them know some things with their rules and stuff. Like Yeah, we were back and forth with them on yeah, the rules. Yeah, yeah. But I, I didn't really do anything after we played it. Uh, we didn't like keep giving input after that. But like around when we played it, I was like very vocal. Even when we were learning it, I was like, this is not the way you should do this and that in games. This is like frustrating for new players, those kind of things. Uh, I, I was not, you know, I was willing to say that stuff. And they were very, like, accepting. I, I'm okay if they don't change it. If they don't want to, that's fine. But I was just letting them know, like, you know, honestly what I thought and stuff. So. Oh, boss we'll is see. saying, what game had to step away? Euthia. This game. Euthia. It's on the screen. Oh, yeah. On the screen. I left the comment on the screen. Why are you asking? <laughs> <laughs> You're not the boss of me. <laughs> oh, wait. No. Yeah, you are. Does it right in the name. Damn it. Yeah, Euthia does look good. I'm excited for that. Damn it. All right. 
Um, yeah, the size of the UT box is crazy. Yeah, I think there was a lot of things that were unlocked during the Kickstarter for that game. Uh, Michael right? mentioned before when we were talking, oh, sorry. Yeah, a lot of stuff's unlocked. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know what we're even getting. Yeah, I, I I'm think, excited. I think we might be getting like some all in crazy business stuff. Uh, I didn't even want to look at what they told me what it was like, you're getting this and that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll just see what happens, what shows up. But <laughs> yeah, I'm, I might have like a blinged out copy. I don't even know. We'll see. I'm excited. Yeah, fun game. But I'll let you guys know what is blinged out and what's not in like the regular game and stuff like that. Uh, but 11. 11. 11 is from Portal Games, right? It's based on soccer slash football. Oh. Uh, which I am not like. I don't really follow or anything, but uh, that's just why I don't care about that game. <laughs> but it did look cool, and, and I have my faith that they'll make it great, but yeah. But I did see that one. I was, I'm aware of it. It's just not a theme I'm interested in. That's all. But it's cool seeing that game, because like, you don't see a lot of games with the theme of like managing a sports team or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, right? It's like you're managing the team, or is it just playing? I think it's... Yeah, do 11 portal games. I'm pretty sure it's that game. I could be confused, but... Yeah, Football Manager... The, yeah, it's called 11 Football Manager The Board Game. Strategy game about running a football club. Interesting. Which is super cool. Like, Very different. I, I love that these games exist that aren't for me, but it's another game that could pull somebody into the hobby. Awesome. Awesome. Interesting. Oh, yeah. wow. There's a lot going on here. Interesting. So yeah, if you're the type that gets like, you know, FIFA and, and gets in there and, and starts making your team from scratch and, and playing like that kind of, uh, I know they have those modes in like NHL and, and Madden and stuff, uh, or whatever they call them nowadays. I don't know if it's still called Madden, but um, where you like manage the team from scratch, like doing the whole player draft and you know trading players during the season you're running you're you're like simulating the games and stuff uh i'm not one of those crazy people that did that but it, it seems like that's that kind of for anyone who does that that's the board game for you if you do that with fifa yeah one of my brothers is into that yeah yeah can't you say and check out intrepid intrepid put that on the list I don't know how much longer we're gonna go for it. I don't know if I want to go into like all these games, but let's see this one. Did I see this one before? No, I I don't know anything about this one, but I will put it on the list to check out. Oh, about surviving two hundred and twenty like miles above Earth on the international aboard the International Space Station. Oh, you're an astronaut. Okay. <coughs> huh. Okay. Well, we can oh, hold on. It's a strategic and highly asymmetrical cooperative game for one to four players. Takes between 60 and 90 minutes. Liars! <laughs> uh, with a variety of nations and disaster scenarios. That seems cool. So if it's kind of survival, obviously you know I'm going to yeah, like yeah. it. Uh, cool. I don't care where the theme is. Yeah, yeah that seems neat. If I have neat. to survive something, I'm in. <laughs> hmm. And is it is it like disasters, like real disasters that can happen? Or is it like aliens are attacking the space station silly stuff like that is this out uh, it's probably kickstarter 2021. 2021 yeah but i didn't see a kickstarter when i googled it oh. usually that's like the first thing that popped oh maybe i'm maybe it's the second one on this one kanji's talking about it it's a oh kickstarter. it's late pledge <laughs> late kidding. pledge only can you survive low earth orbit uproarious games at five thousand backers hmm is it coming to retail? Estimated delivery date is March 2021. Do you have it, Kinj? Is it already out? Intrepid is an ISS manager. <laughs> oh, it delivered last week. Oh, oh okay. cool, cool. I mean, it looks interesting. So you're not telling me to back a game that may or may not come out this uh, decade? I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, it looks interesting. Okay, I got to note that one down as well here. <laughs> awesome 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 that's cool has anyone played it in the chat has anyone played intrepid yet got it and actually cracked it out and played it i want to know is it any good that's the beauty 
If it's just delivering now, it means I can wait for you suckers to play it first. <laughs> and then I can learn from your experiences. Oh, it's a decent weight too. It's 3.36 weighted. Okay, we like that. That's a good number. Yeah. One to four players, which is good too, meaning you can play it solo if needed. Hmm. He just says it's really good and will be fun for both of you as it takes both of you to stay alive. Oh, so Rob has to work with me is what you're saying. You just want to see us <laughs> fight on stream. I know it. <laughs> um, I've seen a few people ask about Isofarian Guard. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, I have to look into it. I remember when that Kickstarter was out and the, and the whole talk about it and it looked cool, but it looked like it might not be great. Uh, and I wasn't sure. And I took a I'll wait and see. Mm. So, yeah, I'll look into it now. Uh, that's supposedly coming out soon, right? If it's not already? I don't know. I don't know if that's I, it. I think that one's delivering to people, too. Oh, it's next year. Oh. Oh, I thought somebody was getting... Somebody said, like, they're, they're already making gameplay videos of it oh. or something. Oh, maybe they're... Maybe... Uh... Oh, is that next year? Are you being true, G Drew, or is that... Are you just making that up? Let me see. You can late pledge it. Let's go to the updates. updates yeah, sorry, I scrolled too far. Find the last one that says. Scroll uh, too far. Uh, just scanning for. No, they're just advertising another. Oh, Kickstarter. I see, I see. Yep. Wrong oh, one. it comes out next year. Oh, shipping details. Here we go. It'll be in this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, so if it's next year, I'll, I'm just waiting on it then. I'll just wait. Well, they have a reminder that the pledge manager will close October 31st, 2021 for anyone that's interested. Okay. So have they shown a more final copy of the game then? That's any different than when they showed it on Kickstarter? I don't know. You know what I mean? Oh, what does that say? Oh, no. Um, Anyways, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we'll have to look into it more. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it does have the foreteller support they were saying, like right from the beginning. Um, yeah. <laughs> Bob says, as we all know, Rob is great at co-op games, as long as you do exactly what he says. Is that the case? Uh, I've been guilty I think, of that in the past, I, I for sure. Though, I think, though, that I for sure. stand up for myself yep. very I, well. I still do it, though. I will still be like, Mel, it's obviously more efficient if you're to do this. And I try not to. I try my best. But, but sometimes, sometimes it, I'm yeah. right. Yeah, but sometimes it's based on random information and you just got to go based on what you know. So yes, you can be right just because, oh, we rolled the die. And it, yeah, you were right. Yeah. You definitely made the right call. But oh, sometimes nice. I'm right too. So, sure, But sure. it's still, we have fun. So it's all good. But yeah, I agree. He's I already am, getting tense and we're not even playing I it. have done this in the past. <laughs> I know, but it's something I used to do early when I was like teaching games and stuff where it would just come out of me. The competitive player comes out of me and I'm like, I want to win, guys. And I try to scale back on that. I try to realize, like, it's not about winning. It's just about having fun. Let the players explore, even if we burn and die and crash. That's true. Whatever. I just need to be happy that everyone's playing with us. But, man, I grew up as the oldest of six children. I have a leader. Supposedly, I've been explained, when you're the oldest of a large group of children, like, most people turn out to be, like, leaders. Like, you just have leader genes in you from that. And it and I'm just very competitive. I grew up very competitive, you know, playing sports and all that kind of stuff. Uh, even in video games, I, I want to freaking win. I want to solve the puzzle. I want to win, and I want to win by a lot. Uh, so yeah. that stuff comes out, That's and I true. I need all the players on my team to to get with it. And you know, I also want to win. Sometimes I know. sometimes other people don't want to win, I know. but I understand I that for sure. But I yeah, want to win. That definitely comes out. I, I'm definitely, I, I, I do that for sure. And I do a lot less than I used to, but you can find old playthroughs where I'm... Well, yeah, Drew's talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I can. Saying that you're both way better than uh, in our old videos. Yeah. Uh, Rob is not super alpha, and Mel is more her own person. Yeah, I think I didn't used to talk yeah. in, in the videos when we first in the, started. In the old videos, no one would speak up, <laughs> and it would drive me nuts. So <laughs> Including I'd all, me, I didn't talk. I would be on tilt because I'm here to present a game. And nobody at the table is presenting it with me. Mm -hmm. and, and nobody's doing a good job of presenting the game or following the rules, uh, you know, to a certain level. So, and they're not paying attention when I'm trying to teach them. So I used to get put on tilt all the time because I felt like I'm not producing a good quality presentation of this game because I'm the only one here pulling my weight. So I used to get really on tilt and sometimes like get pissed at other players at the table in videos. It was, I would just do it. Yeah, I just would do it. I'd be like, Justin, come on, man. I taught you this rule. Like, we also have background with Justin go. and the way we talk. Yeah, yeah. And he talks like that with us. And, yeah, and yeah. you know, so I know that some people have made comments and stuff, but we have we've known Justin longer than like anyone. And yeah. Yeah. So it's taken a while for to break Mel ever shell, get her talking back and, and presenting things properly. And I've told her, like, I, I sat down and I've shown you other I've shown you successful presentation and successful video and and some mm -hmm. of the key things you need to know mm -hmm. and then i've shown her other streams that i think are doing it or other videos that do it wrong even our own yeah and i'm like you watch yourself in this one now watch this girl doing it in this video for some totally other industry or whatever see how she's like got everyone like you're you're paying attention you're yeah. interested you're presenting information properly like yeah yeah no yeah, yeah. i get it for sure and, I and, just... and like yeah sometimes you just have to show people and the way I was trying to push it on people was not the proper way. Right. Not everyone takes criticism and, and the way I teach the, the proper way is not always good. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's just that that's not my personality. I am yeah, yeah. super, super shy, super timid. I'm not going to speak in public if yeah. I don't have to ever. So it took a very long time and lots of experience. But I think watching through and editing because we used to have edited videos for gloomhaven and watching yep. through and editing them myself definitely helped yeah uh, besides no that's 100 percent true what you're saying here besides says mel uh mel didn't play that how i wanted and i took that personally rob probably well i think that actually might have happened last night when we were playing Descent, Pro uh, yeah. I think I think it happened actually. <laughs> yes, it but did. The problem with Descent <laughs> is uh, when I'm playing Descent, I forget that it's a fail forward game. True, true. So in Arkham Horror, I've learned to like just who cares? Let happen what happens. We'll try our best, but if we fail, it's fine. We don't have to replay the scenario usually, and I still get to play something new and cool the next time we play it. Same thing with Descent: Legends of the Dark. But last night, yeah, I was like, yeah, oh man, uh, yeah, let's stop, let's do this. Like, I, yeah, yeah I was no like, spoilers for what actually happened, yeah, but yeah. you have to watch and you'll see there's yeah. a point in time <laughs> that maybe we didn't listen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Dan is mentioning the paint streams. Yes, I need to do. I need to do the more, and I know people have asked for them. I yeah, I just yep. need to. I just need to do it. Uh, it's something that definitely takes me way out of my comfort zone for sure. Like. The very first stream that I did painting, I was like, Rob, you need to be here because you're you're like my um I don't know what you call it, like my support my support, support staff. my support person. Support you know? staff, yeah. So um yeah, doing them by myself is was definitely scary and it's something that maybe I'm I, I had someone ask in the last like uh I was doing something solo. I don't know if it was Here Realms Digital or playing like uh the Sinking City or something, but I was on a stream by myself mm -hmm. and somebody came in and says, Hey Rob, do you know when like Mel's gonna do her next painting stream? And I went oh. I can't answer that for you. Mel's not here. I've told her like she knows you guys want more painting streams, but it's like it's it's, it's kind of scary it's, too. So yeah, it's like it's so maybe something, something that I like excited to do. always put to the back, but I need to put it to the front. Like once you're doing it, you have fun, and after you're like that was cool. Yeah. But then after a couple weeks pass, and then you go let's do another one. You're like, uh, you know, maybe what? later. Honestly, uh, if if Rob could just come and sit with me for like the first ten minutes, yeah, and then he could true. walk away, I would be totally fine. I would do it like once a week. Yeah. But I'm super scared and I like rehearse like 75 times in my head what I'm even going to say. Here, and then the, I just blabber and I make a, a mess Here's the problem though. As soon as people tune into Mel's painting table and they see my <laughs> ugly mug on the screen, you're going to get less viewers. So oh, that's the I problem. Know. Maybe I could just like green, I'll sit behind the green screen so it's like you don't see me, <laughs> but I'm there. I don't know. I don't know. No, you just have to sit here for like 
two minutes, do a little intro with me, and then you can go. <laughs> That's the part that I'm I'll like. Do, I'll do it the way FFG does it. I'll be sitting in the chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we go to another screen. Let's do that. And then I give you the mic and we switch all awkwardly. <laughs> and then when you need like another paint or a paintbrush, I'll dangle it from above. <laughs> oh I'll go, God. here. here's your paintbrush. And you're just like, <laughs> like a paintbrush is hitting you in the head. No, I'm not saying I'm going to do it once a week, but I would be more inclined to do it more if I, yeah. That's the part that scares me is just the start. Watch any of them, you'll see. <laughs> Except Rob will be wearing pants. Yes, he does wear pants. Do I? How do you know? That is true. You never get up on stream. You street. don't know. I sometimes get Nobody up. Nobody knows. I honestly never wear pants on stream. That's, that is true. That is I wear true. shorts. He does not wear pants very rarely. <laughs> <laughs> I wear short. Oh, oh KJ, KJ, thank you for the support. Says thanks for the great stream. Have a good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you for the great chat. Thanks for being here, KJ. I appreciate it. Very sweet. Thank, thank you so much you. for the support. Yeah, Rob is usually in the chat when I'm painting for sure because he needs to be um, I have the there in up. case any tech issues happen that I, 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 I have, have no idea. I have idea. the stream up. Sometimes I have it muted, and I'm just watching to make sure that it's not like spinning. <laughs> Like a spinning circle of failure, yeah. uh, you know, that I have to come and reboot something. Yeah. But Okay, I'm going to do one sooner than later. I just got to think of what to paint. I have a few things. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and says, I remember Rob being in chat when, he, when she was painting. That was a good combo. I was throwing him under the bus, and he was saying, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like lean over. I have it on a laptop on the table in front of me, and I like lean in. I'm like, what are these? I see my name in there. Like, what are these guys? I'm not even in the stream. What's happening? That's funny, too, because when you're playing solo, if I'm not in a meeting or something, I usually have it on. I may not be fully paying attention or listening, but like I might have the chat open on another screen. So it's the same idea. Also related to Drew mentioning we're both way better than in older videos. Uh, part of that too is just uh, it takes a while to get used to it. A thousand percent. Like the nerves. The nerves of people watching you do something yeah. that you don't feel confident in doing. Yes. That, that is a huge thing. And at some point you either don't care about not being confident and you feel like you're, it's just fine. Or you just get used to it and you learn ways of getting through it. Yeah. Early videos, I was always nervous. I still am nervous about getting rules wrong, about presenting a game wrong that maybe somebody would love, but the way I, I present it, it, it falls flat and people aren't interested in it. Um, you know, that, that maybe would have loved it or a technical issue happens and I just and lose my mind. it throws you off too, yep. right? Yeah. Like I've had issues where audio, I've had all those issues. I make fun of FFG streams for happening. I had them. But again, it was me by myself, like not knowing anything. That's unacceptable for a company who has a budget for that stuff. Yeah, and has like employees that yeah. just handle that. Yeah. But some of that, that, some of that comes from that too. Like a lot of those videos where I was like maybe not as fun and outgoing, I was afraid of maybe being myself on stream. You know, I was tr I was more worried about the technology, more worried about the game rules and stuff, and getting through a playthrough in a certain amount of time. I used to be stressed about how long a video would take. Oh, yes, that was true. I yeah. used to be like, hurry up, take your turns, guys. Hurry up. Like, I used to put pressure on the players on video to take their turn, let's go. Like, we've played this game six times. Now we're just playing it on stream or, or on camera mm -hmm. to make a video to show people the game. Let's not take all day with it. Let's go. Come on. Like, they're not going to click the video. They're not going to watch this long if we take too long. They're going to get bored and tune away. Stuff like that I used to care about. But then I realized, like, with you guys supporting us, you know, through kind words, sitting here watching, the like button, donating, all that stuff, I realized, like, once I started just, like, doing it the way I felt it was right and, and not with the pressure and kind of, like, presenting it how I wanted to be and being myself and, and playing games how I would play if not cameras are running. Because when cameras aren't running, I don't play games like that. I sit there quiet in the corner. I have yeah. fun messing with other players. I'm teaching other players. I'm losing on purpose to help other players have fun with the game, learn the game, and get hooked. But I don't always play that way on camera. So it's like, because I'm, I'm, everyone's watching. I'm trying to present. I'm trying to, you know, be on and that kind of stuff. So I learned just like, just don't stress about that stuff. So, um, so yeah. So that's why we're better. It just took time to like. Develop into yeah, what Yeah, to realize what it is. like, yeah, you don't, we don't have to take it so serious. Yeah. 
and, and you guys like rewarded us for that with like positive reinforcement you know yeah. just being here like people started showing up more you know and people started watching more videos and we started like just you know being just, more ourselves yeah I being think. ourselves yeah. not stressing about the length of the video or how the sound sounds and you know the lighting and all that stuff like the rules whatever like, which yeah. is crazy because there's still quite a few of you sitting here watching us just jabber on about nothing we're not playing anything right now yeah, i'm waiting for you guys to leave we're just this talking is you know like just I, like friends would you know so yeah, we look at you guys as our friends you're in our you're in our gaming room at our table sit, pulled up a chair you're yeah. sitting on that chair and i'm now awkwardly waiting for you guys to get the hell out <laughs> the game's over guys get the hell out so we can go to bed we're mm. done <laughs> You drank all our beer, you ate all our snacks, you got Cheeto dust on our damn game. Get the hell Kate out. Kate says they're never going to leave. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and Brian says agreed. You guys are more real. And that's how you connect and develop a community. And that's, I think, uh, a test to you guys as well. Because you know how awesome it is when someone will come in and say, you know, um, my, I, we just had a baby. Or, you know, those kinds of things. And it's, it's like you're yeah. sharing with your friends I, i'm like, about to get married and i'm watching yeah, your stream those while, kind of things are amazing I, like i'm just waiting for my wedding to get going and I, i'm watching you while like we're getting ready yeah like, what yeah you know it's amazing or, 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 or I, the people that were watching while their wives were in labor and stuff the best one though the most heartwarming one was all last year when everyone including myself was going through all different kinds of levels of depression that's true from COVID, from losing jobs, from not being able to go to their conventions, to not see their friends, to having relatives dying, to being sick, yeah. all that stuff, being locked in their house, financial can't go outside, stress, financial stress, emotional, all that stuff. And people were messaging me, people were coming in the chats, people were sending me emails, Facebook messages, Patreon messages, coming in the Discord, telling us, venting, expressing themselves in our Discord was super cool. It's a private Discord, just so anyone knows. Um, but yeah, uh, just some of our producers in the Discord, just and, and in the live chat, even just opening up about like watching me just sitting in my basement playing board games with you guys. Like I used to just play all day, like Seven Con and stuff. And I'm thinking like, who the hell wants to watch this? But if, to find out later that those kind of playthroughs, all the playthroughs, all the Too Many Bones playthroughs last year, all this kind of stuff, there's so many people hanging out during those streams, and that was helping them get through that depression. And that you guys in the chat helped me get through that depression too. Uh, and I'm going through it a little bit right now too with the not being able to go to Gen Con and stuff and seeing people going and stuff. Uh, Cause that's like my favorite thing, my Disneyland and stuff like that. So the fact you guys are here with me right now and I feel like I'm at the con and we just got out of the FFG in-flight report and we're all standing in the hallway at the hotel Huddled, and we're all talking. Yeah. yeah, we're all like, whoa, did you see that? Yeah. Did you see that? Which is what we would have loved yeah. to do with you guys yeah. had we had the chance. Agreed. And and thank you for helping me with that. But those are the most touching things when when I find out that people uh, got through those rough times and, and we helped. Because yeah. that's not why I originally did this. That's no. not why I do this. But when I hear that, that is like, holy, that, that, yeah. that's, that's like, that's right there. Yeah. That's right there. So yeah. yeah. So I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. You guys are too kind. Um, it's also crazy to see the friendships that people have made through the, ch the channel Kate, as well. Kate's talking about right now, too. Kate says, everyone here is, is my regular social contact now. I talk with people here in stream slash Discord more than in real life. Which is amazing. Yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. People that have shipped yeah. other people games that have... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, when we did that silly little thing, I thought it was silly for the longest time when you were like, Rob, you should do a Discord, a way that people can chat like while the stream's not on. Well, at the time, and, and I they didn't think... Us. And, and we're like, what What should we do for a re reward on Patreon? Like, I don't know. Like, how is that a reward? Like, that doesn't sound like a reward. <laughs> no one wants to chat with me off stream. No one wants to chat with each other. I, like, I didn't think that was a thing. I didn't even know. And uh, yeah, thanks to Mel for like saying, like, do it. And at the time, and, and I'm glad I did because, like, man, <laughs> I, I like ma making these little channels and like seeing everyone chatting about stuff in there. Yeah, things I agree with, things I don't, but it's just like it's so awesome to see people just go in there and like any discords like that, like any discord, any publishers discord, any other YouTube channel discord, any of this stuff. I love that this whole thing came about that people just do that and they get together and they talk about like things like 
way better than the forums of old days, right? Yeah. It's just like so cool. Yeah. Um, well, it's a commonality yeah. that we have. We all love board games. And so, yeah, it's just somewhere that, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Uh. Bob is being funny here. Are you opening Bob's? Yeah, yeah, I okay. saw Bob's. Okay. Bob says, it does help that we've been stuck in the house for about 18 months with nothing to do but watch Rom's game too. <laughs> but he still refuses. He didn't need to click on he it. He still refuses to eat pineapple pizza with his wife, though, and, and, and enjoy some She's going to have to look elsewhere for her pineapple pizza yeah, fix. Yeah, he's yeah. got it. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Logutre says, where else can we talk about hockey rules and Canadian law? I know, exactly, right? They're, they're obviously the same thing. All the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. put them together. It's amazing. <laughs> I don't remember where we were going with all of that. Yeah. Oh, it was, yeah. We don't, we don't get into all on, that. It started yeah. on We're not going to get into all that, but. Yeah. No, yeah, I just yeah. don't remember what we were talking about before that. Oh, yeah. I don't remember either. Like, I don't know how that got on there, but. It's amazing. And Heather says, see, this is the stuff I, I, like this, like, is awesome. I understand this. I, I, I listen to pod, other podcasts and stuff and do the same thing. Heather says, I have anxiety, anxiety and trauma from my past that attracts my sleep. Your streams have gotten me through a lot of hard nights. Aww. That, like that, like, I, uh, Heather, you don't even know. Like, I, I don't yeah, talk about Yeah, he has trouble it. sleeping. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to get into it. But yeah, we all have stuff in our past that, like, maybe regret or things that happen that you know we couldn't we couldn't change or, or help them happen to us but yeah sometimes they, they come back and they kind of like haunt you and you can't get them out of your head mm -hmm. uh i totally understand mm -hmm. uh but yeah sometimes put on a, like a good podcast or i watched some video i did last night i watched like a, a stream uh a stream on twitch of yeah. a super monotone you know uh, a super monotone guy that i just love watching and yeah, great strategy in what he does, but yeah, just like he'll talk uh, very monotone. It's very like... Yeah, he doesn't get excited ever. <laughs> yeah. But see, some people say how they put our streams on and they fall asleep, but I always thought we were louder than... Mm, I think I have it so we don't spike too much and stuff. But even like but... if I laugh or get excited, like that doesn't... I don't know. I don't know. I guess not. Maybe, maybe they just mean your solo players. We don't have like music blaring or... That's true. Pop-ups doing like fireworks and crazy horns and stuff really, but... <laughs> That's true. Where we're not breaking out into DJs with flashing lights and like, burr, 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 like remixing songs <laughs> and jumping around. No, nobody wants Hype to train. Burr, burr, burr. Nobody wants to see any of that. <laughs> but yeah, I should start doing that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So we should have a thirty-minute dance party before yes. our stream starts. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who <laughs> says you guys had me? Uh, or is there right here? You guys had me as fans for life when Mel <laughs> turned over Lita in that Arkham Horror LCG stream. Oh, that's awesome. That I, was like the most amazing my moment. My mind is still blown from that. Yeah. I just, yeah, I couldn't believe it. That was the most amazing moment. I couldn't even believe it. Can you, I've had other lucky moments like that, for sure. Uh, yeah. I, for sure. But I think I'm a lucky board gamer. I get lucky a lot in board games. Or you secretly took some magic classes I don't know about, and you have like crazy <laughs> sleight of hand skills or something. No, I definitely do not. I definitely do not. Yeah. But I do think I have some good luck. I can't shuffle cards without dropping them all over the table. So you don't look at me. I wasn't part of that for sure. Uh, uh, Spencer says, I'm still waiting on my sign. Rob's gaming table, too many bones dice. What? I'm waiting on my sign. Rob's gaming table, too many bones dice. Hmm. I am a sloppy. I, uh, I'm sloppy with my signature. I, I don't think I could fit it on, on a die. Or, or like I have to line up a whole bunch of dice and then just like sign all the dice so they have to like put it together as a puzzle to see my signature. Oh. I'm not sure I could do that. <laughs> now a signed playmat. I've done that before. Yeah, you have done that I've before. I've signed playmats. Yeah, that was a humbling That's, moment. Yeah. Going to Worlds at Fantasy Flight, one of the Fantasy Flight Games Worlds I went to, actually I think two of them I went to and having people like pull me aside to be like, can you sign my playmat? That was like really cool. Yeah, because like, we're just like you guys. Yeah, I was. Well, it was like, it's cool. There were some people that were doing it to just collect all the players they yeah, played that's against. Cool. And stuff. Like a year, like your high school yearbook. Yeah, it was yeah. cool. Like some people I met for the first time, people from all around the world, man. It was cool, like talking to people who barely spoke English, and, and you know, or speaking Italian or something, and and they're like, you know, they watch my channel and they're like, sign my mat. I was like, yeah, of course, man, of course. There was that one time where I was like, I had to get to my plane, and I was like, my car is here, but um, 
But other than that, yeah, there was some cool stuff there. That that was cool to do the autographs there. But yeah, I I, I think it was cool. Yeah, but other than that, I, I'm not signing your dice. Get out of here, Spencer. He says he's joking. I know he's joking. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Jan is saying we need our Rob's Gaming Table merch shop. I know, oh. I know, I know, I know. you just have to ask him every every few weeks. I think about it like every we, week. I know, we think about it all the time. <sighs> it's like a, it's like your daunting task. Yeah, like I just, the, my I per I'm streams. procrastinating with it. I know it needs to be done, just like when Mel used to hound me for starting a Patreon. I fought her on that for like a year. <laughs> I'm like, no one wants to pay me. Well, to people do, were to do this stuff. People were saying like, I know. people would come up to us I know. when we would go somewhere and like hand him money and say, "I wish I could donate to you." Yeah, I know. You know, uh, and it was people, like yeah, when people started stuffing twenty dollars, <laughs> fifty dollars into my uh, camera equipment bags when I'm live streaming tournaments, and I find it later when I get home, uh, then I realized like, okay, okay, all right, I'll do the stupid Patreon. But I do appreciate all the support. I appreciate all the support, okay? Uh, and, and the YouTube join button, that was something I could have done for like a year that I kind of let, let, I kind of let sit to the sidelines like, yes, YouTube, I know I can enable the button. But I already asked them to donate on Patreon. I'm st I don't like asking for money. So just so you guys know, that's something that was hard for me to do a, lo a long time. But I do appreciate the support. Uh, you don't, yeah, you don't have to, but I do appreciate it. So on that note, thank you everyone who donates. Thank you all who are watching. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there are links down in the video description on how you can donate. And if you want to become a producer, you can join our private Discord. There is a lot of amazing people in the chat right now who are part of that Discord. Uh, and yeah, if you can't donate, anybody who's in that Discord, I say this every now and then too, is anyone who can't donate anymore or stops donating, don't feel like you can't show up to a live stream again. Because there's a few people that stop donating and then they disappear. Now, I know maybe they disappear because we maybe don't play their favorite game anymore. And True, then they stop yeah. donating. Totally makes sense. If you don't watch us, it's all good. Don't donate. It makes sense. If, if you know, you're not getting entertainment from us, it makes sense. But uh, don't be a stranger. If, if something's going on and you just can't donate anymore, like, you know. Yeah, we understand 100%. Come, hang in the chat. I have no ill will. Yeah. No ill will. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. There've been some people who come back and and leave and support and stuff. Or they say sorry, like they're they don't you don't need to apologize at yeah. all. Yeah. And sometimes I get worried that something happened. Oh yeah, that's terrible. We have talks about that sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I tell Mel when we're not streaming, I'm like, you know, we haven't seen so and so in a while. Like I hope they're okay. Yeah. But like I I don't have a way to contact them, so it's like I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Because as we said, you guys are our friends and we worry. Yeah. So just uh. Not about everyone. Dan, Dan Roberts, I don't worry about. Mm -hmm. Or Bob, but mm -hmm. everyone else. Yeah, yeah. I worry. I worry I'm just about kidding. you guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, we like the lurkers too. Lurk all oh, yep. day. Lurk all day. I'm 99% of the time, I'm a lurker on yep. Twitch and YouTube all day. Yeah. All day I lurk. Maybe every now and again say hello so we know yeah. you're okay, but yeah. lurk away. I'm just saying those who <laughs> chat a bunch, there's been people that have chat a bunch, and then they don't donate anymore, and then I don't see them anymore. And I, I keep wanting to say, like, don't feel like you can't, if you can't support us, like, still come and hang out in the chats yeah. if, you're, if you're still watching our content. Don't feel ashamed or anything. Uh, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Uh... It says it's like Bob Ross contacting his fans or they stopped writing him. He used to do that? Oh, wow. That's amazing. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's getting all the love today. Here we go. Uh, I love you too, Rob. Mm -hmm. That's all we need to read. That's it. <laughs> no, he says, I love you too, Rob. I come from Mel and put up with you. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Daniel's here. Hey, Daniel. Yes, says, Daniel's been a while too. I'm for still you. here. I just don't hang out in the chat a lot, and that's fine. And that's fine. Yeah, we understand that. That's for fine. Sure. And I do know there's some people that that watch the videos later, not in the live chat. I always forget that too. Yeah. So can drop a comment. You can always drop a comment to say, <laughs> say hi. Hi, I'm here still. <laughs> you can say I love the playthrough. I'm still here watching. I appreciate you. That's uh, you know, or I put up with you. Whatever you want to say, you know, you can always do that too. So I do appreciate that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Elaine says, yeah, Elaine, eh, eh, we're, you know, you're lurking in there, too. Don't worry about me. I work too much. Aw. Well, that's Understood. unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. But I do understand some people have been watching or chatting because we've been playing, like, the story games, the campaign games, 
that we've gone way past spoiler territory, right? Yeah. So we need to get back to some of these like once a week at least where we're playing some games that everyone can tune in and some new games that we can play that are one off. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and show off some scenario based games or whatever you, we want to call them. That's true. So, yeah, I knock Zombicide. I'm like, man, they never put a campaign in. That sucks. But, man, and now I'm talking about I need games that don't have campaigns. So, hmm. <laughs> make up your freaking mind, Rob. Oh, Spencer. Hold on. Spencer with the hot take. I heard some new games got announced. <laughs> Hold on while I ban Spencer from the chat. <laughs> no, but wait, maybe there's more information, right? Because like... Oh, he's trolling. He's saying... Are you trolling? There's, there's new oh. games that got announced every... There's new games that got announced in the stream. That's true. That's true. But maybe you have more information. Are you trolling us? No, he's just being joking. He's just saying... <laughs> if you need more games, I know there's some new games. <laughs> <laughs> I assume so. I assume so. No, you're probably right. I, I read way too much into this. Sometimes I just actually just read it and I don't actually think about what I'm reading. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I'll be streaming in the morning, 11, I believe, uh, playing some more. Uh, it's a video game stream. Not for everybody, I know, but I'm having fun diving deeper into the HP Lovecraft Cthulhu Mythos, which you guys got me into with all the FFG games I've been playing. Um, but I love consuming that media in that world. Uh, the Sinking City uh, is what I'm playing through right now on PC. Um, so, yeah, if you want to come hang out and watch me... Do some investigating and trying to shoot monsters with weird combat mechanics. Uh, you can come join me tomorrow for that live stream. Uh, we're back on Saturday. We're playing some more Madara. Maybe also on Sunday, depending on what's going on. Uh, we're back again next week for more Descent Legends of the Dark with Kyle playing three-player on Tuesday night. Um, other than that, I don't know. But anyways... Speaking of diving deeper, what was under that handkerchief? <laughs> I think that's going to be the new joke. But yes, thank you all for watching. Everyone enjoy the rest of your night, your day, whenever you're watching. Ha have a good rest of your day. Uh, if you're watching this later, you probably didn't get this far. You probably <laughs> left by now. But if you scrubbed and got to this point, uh, leave down in the comments below. Let me know your reaction, your impressions. If you're watching this later, you didn't get to... Even if you watched the FFG live stream, not on our channel, mm -hmm. and you just, you know, you came and saw this later... I want to know in the comments below, like, uh, just leave me, like, what your thoughts are. I'll see the notifications, uh, and yeah, just let me know, did this suck? Was it good? What were you excited about? What did you wish they showed? You know, what might be coming later, you know? Because they, they show stuff, but they also announce new stuff all year long. Yeah. So, in a month, we could see an article for whatever Heather's laughing at us with her evil cackle going, <laughs> you guys don't even know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So who knows? Uh, but anyways, yeah. So that's stuff we could know about soon. So, but I'm curious, drop it in the comments below on your way out. Don't forget to hit that like button. It helps out the, the stream, helps out the channel a lot, helps other people find these videos on YouTube. If you want to find us again in another live stream, the best way is to subscribe, hit the notification bell. And so you don't miss a future live stream or you can at least swipe away the ones you don't want to watch, but at least you won't miss one. But anyways, thanks a lot for watching. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.